Hi, everybody, and good Friday night to you. Welcome to Tompkins High School in Katy. It's the third round of the baseball playoffs in the Ridgepoint Panthers based on their game one win last night. We'll try to finish off a sweep of the Tompkins Falcons, but it is not going to be easy. Tompkins is not rated high throughout the state of Texas for nothing, and they are on their home field, I'm sure, very comfortable and confident, so Ridgepoint is just going to have to be ready for anything. So we are ready to set you up with the Batter Up show, and you'll hear from both head coaches. Our coverage on VitefortBend.com, your broadcast home for Fort Bend County Sports, is brought to you by, by First Tyrant Automotive. Four great Fort Bend County locations, including Katie Cinco Ranch, very close to you Tompkins fans, and of course locations in the Fort Bend ISD part of Fort Bend County. We're also brought to you by Xfinity, the future of awesome by Archer Volkswagen and the Needville Insurance Agency. So we'll be back with Coach Michael Dut. Uh, I said Coach Michael Dutka. You know, Coach Clinton Welch used to make me interview the assistant, Michael Dutka, because of a superstition. And lately it's been Coach Welch, and uh, I don't know why I possibly made that mistake. But it'll be Coach Welch who will be talking to us on the Batter Up show when we return on VibeFortBend.com. Glad you're with us. It's a warm, humid evening. we got a great ball field to play on. I'm Roger Smith. I couldn't be happier than to be right here with you for great playoff baseball. We'll be right back. Coming in at five foot three inches, it's number one mom. She switched to Xfinity and got the all new three for one bundle. Unlimited internet, streaming, and Xfinity mobile. All for what you could pay wireless companies for just one 5G unlimited line. Boom shakalaka. That's why they call her the master of moolah, the sultan of savings, the queen of cash. And now, also with Xfinity Internet, you can get unlimited data, Wi-Fi equipment, and a free Flex 4K streaming box included with a two-year rate guarantee and no-term contract. All for just $30 per month when you add an Xfinity mobile plan at regular rates. Go to Xfinity.com slash 3 for 1, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store today. Limited time offer, restrictions apply. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. New fast internet 300 megabits for second customers only. Xfinity Mobile requires post pay Xfinity internet. After 24 months, regular rates apply to all services and devices. Welcome to the Batter Up Show, game two of the regional quarterfinal series. It's Ridgepoint leading Tompkins one game to none. And it's time to talk to Clinton Welch after last night's game. Coach, is that one of those situations your, your team came through in the clutch? when it probably might not have felt like they were going to come through, but did you have to settle them down at all after a win such as that? Well, not really. They know the, the situation, and you know, rightfully so. They should be excited after an inning like that. But they'll, they'll uh, you know, within, I'm sure within about 30 minutes of the game, they started refocusing. So they should be good to go. Now, I was researching this game. I was trying to think of times that you had played Tompkins. And, you know, max preps is not always complete. And that's that's nobody's fault. It's just what teams report. But it looked like Tompkins and Ridgepoint had played each other only three times prior to last night. Does that sound about right to you? Oh, it's something like that. We're in the KD tournament. So tournament ball the first week of the season it would be the only time we've played them. Now, I think you're going with Hunter Nichols tonight on the mound. Is that right as he's the starter? That is correct. So what are some of the, the battle plan items that that Hunter needs to do to make sure the Panthers are successful tonight? It's, it's usually always the same. We need to throw strikes with multiple pitches so the other team can't sit on fastball. So that's typically always the plan for most teams. Now, speaking of multiple pitches, I don't know if you had it in your mind, maybe things like this never pass you by at all, even the most uh, small details, but I noticed that after two were out in the bottom of the seventh last night and there was nobody oh, on, hey, buddy. the winning rally took no, five no, pitches. No, 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 no walk off. Uh, you had Vlasic hit the first pitch, Kennett hit the first pitch, and then Groen hit the third pitch. Did you realize it was that quick? I didn't really pay attention to what the count was, so I had no idea. 
All right. Well, it, it seemed like it took a long time, but uh, it's very exciting. So I just want to say thank you. You don't get to see something like that very often. It was. It was a great, uh, you know, exciting ending. Fortunately, it went our way against a really good team. And a little shout out to our crowd. We had a great crowd at our home park last night. I really was impressed, and uh, I don't expect anything less, even though this is not a home game for you. So it's great to visit with you. Good luck tonight, and uh, we'll either be talking to you tomorrow night or sometime next week. All right, Roger. Thank you. All right. That is Clinton Welch, head coach of the Ridge Point Panthers, and we'll be back with the man who is the skipper of the Tompkins Falcons. They really haven't had their backs up against the wall really at all this year. But Kyle Humphreys is going to have to come up with the winning formula to keep his team alive and push this series to a game three. Our coverage tonight on BiteFortBend.com is brought to you by First Tire and Automotive with four great Fort Bend County locations, including Katie Cinco Ranch. So Tompkins fans, you should go check them out. They have great prices on tires. In fact, the best prices on tires that you'll find, as well as great service. And they're open Monday through Saturday. FirstTireAndAuto.com. We're also brought to you by Xfinity, the future of awesome by the Needville Insurance Agency and Archer Volkswagen. We'll be back with Coach Kyle Humphreys when we return on the Batter Up Show right after this. First Tire and Automotive, serving Fort Bend County drivers for over 20 years, salutes and congratulates the graduating class of 2022. Wherever the road takes you, you can be sure that you'll need professional auto care along the way. First Tire and Automotive's four locations throughout Fort Bend County are the perfect pit stops for all of your auto repair and maintenance needs. Check out the website firsttireandauto.com for great savings. The First Tire and Automotive technicians can fix all problems on any make or model. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. FirstTireAndAuto.com Archer Volkswagen showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavenaugh with Needville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. You are the master of the multitask, the champion of making it happen. Taking care of business is not for the faint of heart. Still, you take care of it. Taking care of business. But who takes care of you? Office Depot Office Max. We supply you, copy you, and tune you up. Members get 2% back in rewards on everything, and we mean everything. We take care of you, so you can take care of business. Office Depot Office Max. Taking care of business. Welcome back to the Batter Up Show at Tompkins as the Falcons are hosting Ridge Point in Game 2 of this Region 368 quarterfinal series. It's time to talk to Kyle Humphreys of the Falcons. And let's first of all talk about your starter on the mound tonight in a must-win game, Rotberg. What does he bring to the mound? Uh, he's, he's a guy kind of like Esparza. He's going to be consistent. He's going to throw strikes. Uh, he's going to mix it up. You know, he's not, he's not a guy that's going to overpower you but he's he's been a, a solid pitcher for us this year and, and won a lot of games for us whenever you have a must win game i know that uh i guess that's when coaches really earn their money because you have to say whatever is going to help your guys get through and and win the game and continue so what are some things that you might uh make sure that your kids know before they they have the first pitch tonight well there's no time limit in baseball you saw that last night right so it's not like there's four minutes left in the game and you can run the clock out. So uh, you got to have 21 outs. 
uh, doesn't matter. You know, we I, I think our team uh, has been a solid, you know, two out or two strike hitting team. Uh, we guys in scoring position all year, and we need to do a little bit more of that in the playoffs. Um, <clears throat> You know, but this group is is uh, resilient. Uh, they'll come back. They'll fight. They'll play. And uh, you know, we're gonna have to. It's a good team. Is there anybody in your coaching career that has been the mentor that you occasionally call up for advice at one time or another that we might know from the greater Houston area? Well, uh, you know, I'd probably say you know my dad was a longtime coach. Uh, uh, I played for my dad in high school. Um, you know, but I, I played for a lot of good, good coaches in my career. You know, I, I might be one of the very few that played college baseball for five years and had five different college coaches. So, you know, maybe I wasn't the greatest player in the world. Uh, but, you know, after you play, you may not know it when you're playing, but after you play, you realize uh, the good and the bad of what each coach did. I, I, every coach I played for had very, you know, was a good coach. But, uh, you know, you learn what you like and maybe some things that you might not like uh, from each coach and you kind of take some of that with you. And when you play good teams, uh, you know, there's probably not a whole lot that I do uh, differently than a lot of other people. I kind of steal from everybody else. And, uh, you know, but it, it's about our players. And, uh, you know, the reason we're here is, is not necessarily because of our coaching staff. It's here because we have, you know, very talented players. And, uh, you know, at this point in the season, you, you gotta have fun. Uh, you got to keep these guys fresh, and it's about just letting these guys play right now. And one other thing, just my observation, in all kinds of sports, you'll have some of the very best head coaches or managers who were not very good as players. And I'm not necessarily <laughs> – you told me you, you were not that great of a player, but, uh, you know, you talk about someone like Tommy Lasorda. I mean, he was one of the greatest ever, and, and you know, he, he didn't uh, knock your socks off as a player in a lot of – coaches are like that so it makes someone feel great you know maybe if whatever dreams they have drew uh to come true as a player if they don't work out then they can stay in the game for a long time and i know you plan on doing that you look very young <laughs> i appreciate it. i don't know if i'm that young but uh you know there's a there's a there's a lot of good coaches in this area and uh you know when you get to this point in the year you're going to play uh some very quality teams rich points one of them uh, I feel that uh, we are one of those teams, and, uh, you know, I like our chances of, uh, you know, having somebody try to beat us twice. All right. Thank you very much, and good luck tonight. And I All guess right. if things go your way, we'll be talking to you right. again tomorrow night before Game 3. Thank you very much. All right. We'll be back with the starting lineups on BikeFortBend.com. It is Ridgepoint taking on Tompkins. We'll be back right after this. Roger Smith with you from a very nice facility at Tompkins. And just in case you're wondering... Before you get to the outfield fence, let's say you're running toward it, they have a real warning track, you know, where things start crunching under your feet so you know the wall is coming. We'll be back on BikeFortBend.com. Coming in at five foot three inches, it's number one mom. She switched to Xfinity and got the all new three for one bundle. Unlimited internet, streaming, and Xfinity mobile. All for what you could pay wireless companies for just one 5G unlimited line. Boom shakalaka. That's why they call her the master of moolah, the sultan of savings, the queen of cash. And now, also with Xfinity Internet, you can get unlimited data, Wi-Fi equipment, and a free Flex 4K streaming box included with a two-year rate guarantee and no term contract. All for just $30 per month when you add an Xfinity mobile plan at regular rates. Go to Xfinity.com slash 3 for 1, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store today. Limited time offer, restrictions apply. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. New fast internet 300 megabits per second customers only. Xfinity Mobile requires post pay Xfinity internet. After 24 months, regular rates apply to all services and devices. Here is your starting lineup for the visiting Ridge Point Panthers. Mason Dossett leading off tonight and playing center field as he did last night, but he was not in the leadoff spot. Parker Martin bats second, he's the third baseman. Justin Vosses at shortstop bats third. Travis Vlasic, the first baseman, is the cleanup hitter. Catcher J.J. Kennett bats fifth. Carter Groen in left field, batting in the sixth spot. Batting in the seventh spot, it's right fielder Owen Ferris. Quinn Pfeiffer is the designated hitter tonight, batting in the eighth spot in place of Hunter Nichols, the starting pitcher for the Panthers. 
Zion Stevens, the second baseman, has been leading off, but now he's in the nine spot. For the Tompkins Falcons, Cash Russell leads off, plays second base. Jace Laviolette in center field, bats second. Jack Little is the first baseman, bats third. Drew Markle, the shortstop, bats in the cleanup spot. Landon West, the catcher, bats fifth. Batting sixth, it's Ty Dagley in left field. Adam Benavides at third base, bats seventh for Tompkins. Tyler Brownlee in right field. And batting in the ninth spot, D.H. Ivan Gomez, batting for the pitcher, Solomon Rotberg. We'll be back with the starting, well, well, we already gave you the starting lineups. We'll be back with the first pitch on VibeFortBend.com right after this. First Iron Automotive serving Fort Bend County drivers for over 20 years salutes and congratulates the graduating class of 2022. Wherever the road takes you, you can be sure that you'll need professional auto care along the way. First Iron Automotive's four locations throughout Fort Bend County are the perfect pit stops for all of your auto repair and maintenance needs. Check out the website firsttireandauto.com for great savings. The First Iron Automotive technicians can fix all problems on any maker model. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. FirstTireAuto.com. Archer Volkswagen Showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Hello, I'm Gary Horn with Horn Solutions. We agree with energy analysts that the energy market has stabilized. We anticipate significant merger and acquisition activity. Good resources are scarce. Horn Solutions is positioned to assist you in accounting, finance, IT, and supply chain. Our staff can assist you with outsourcing, or we can supply you with resources to join your staff. Visit hornsolutions.net for details. Gary Horn is a highly successful businessman who has made a huge impact in people's lives, and he loves what he does for a living. That's a big reason why Gary Horn and Horn Solutions support Get a Great Gig. Get a Great Gig is a free job search consultation service that will help you find a job you love, whether it's to make more money or get personal fulfillment in the career of your choice. Email them at getagreatgig at gmail.com or on Twitter at getgreatgigs. Everybody standing to honor America as we play the Star Spangled Banner and Rich Point is going to try to get off to a good start on offense as they took forever to get runs on the board. They waited until the bottom of the seventh inning and they finally got it done with the miraculous 2-1 to one win over Tompkins and that has the Falcons in that position where their backs are against the wall. And I want to correct what I said during the batter up show because... I said that Tompkins really hasn't had its backs against the wall. Well, the Falcons last week had to defeat Houston Lamar in a game three situation. So they are putting Solomon Rotberg, their left-hander, on the mound tonight to try and beat back the challenge from the Ridge Point Panthers. Solomon Rotberg was the starter and loser in game two of the Lamar series. He started and got the win in the game two clincher against the Elkins Knights, his Record in postseason is 1-1 one and one with an ERA of 2.47. He's pitched 11 and a thirds innings in those two games that he pitched. He threw 86 pitches against the Elkins Knights and 102 in that game against Lamar. And very consistent hitting the strike zone, pounding at 65% against Elkins and 60%. And the Lamar start, nine hits allowed in 11 and a thirds innings. Seven runs given up, four of those earned, 13 strikeouts, so he can make the ball move a lot. And he's walked six, but he's also given up a couple of home runs, and there's a strong wind blowing out to left field here at Tompkins. 
Here's the Tompkins defense. Landon West is the catcher. Jack Little at first base. Cash Russell plays second base. Drew Markle at shortstop. And at third base, it's Adam Benavides. Ty Dagley in left field for Tompkins. Jace Laviolette in center. And Tyler Brownlee is in right field. So a little shakeup in the Ridgepoint batting order. Parker Martin is 4 for 17 in the postseason, hitting 235. He's got a double, and he moves to the top spot. And Zion Stevens has just been trying to shake out of the doldrums, and they'll take a little pressure off him, and he will bat in the 9 spot today. So the left-hander, Rotberg, is going to pitch to Parker Martin to get this. I'm sorry. Never mind. It's not Parker Martin. It's Mason Dossett, okay? D Dossett. You know, he ran into the wall in game one against Seven Lakes, but he is two for two in the at-bats he's had, plus a walk. He got the start last night, and we are underway. Mason Dossett ready. Rotberg's first pitch is high and away for a ball. Great crowd behind us from the Ridgepoint Panthers. Of course, Tompkins, they have packed their ballpark tonight. Rotberg winds, and the lefty brings it. Dossett lets that one go, and it's outside for ball two. 323 feet down each of the lines, 358 feet to the power alleys. It doesn't tell you what it is to straightaway center. I imagine a little bit farther than 358. That pitch is upstairs, and Dossett has a 3-0 count on him. And the Ridgepoint fans giving Solomon Rotberg a little something to think about. He rocks and brings the 3-0 in there for a strike. 90 degrees at first pitch time here in Katy. Cloudy skies above. The sun should not be a problem. The lights are already on. And a hard wind blowing out to left field. Pitch to Dossett. Swings and misses. And the count now 3-2. Dossett had a home run in district play this year. And now we have four umpires, by the way, for tonight's game, which is great. Usually you only have three. In fact, we had three for last night's game. But there's one at every base, plus you've got your home plate umpire. And the home plate umpire and first base umpire wanted to talk to each other a little bit. And they give a slight warning for Solomon Rotberg if and when there is a base runner on what he can and can't do. They don't want to call box in this game. Three and two the count on Dossett, first hitter of the game. Here's the pitch from Rotberg and it's way upstairs above the crown of Dossett's helmet. And that's a walk, Ridgepoint would love to get several runs in the first inning, but that is easier said than done. All right, now Parker Martin and he's the one batting 235 in the postseason. Four for 17, including the double. And it's going to be lefty versus lefty. Ridgepoint wearing the purple jersey tops with the white letters and numerals. And the white pants with purple piping down each leg. Rotberg looks over at Dossett who really has speed. First pitch swinging by Martin. It's going to the foul ground behind third and it drops harmlessly to the grass. By the way, I don't think it's going to be a problem tonight. But whenever you have a very, very dry spring, as we have had, not only do you have a hard field, but in places where the ballpark is not in the middle of bustling retail suburbia neighborhoods. You got to be careful because sometimes some little critters who aren't welcome can make their way to the ballpark. I will have a story about something that happened in the 2018 series between Travis and Cy Woods later in the ballgame. Nothing and won the count on Parker Martin after that foul ball. Rotberg comes set, now throws over, and Dossett dives back in. Dossett is 0 for 1 in his stolen base attempts in the postseason. This is just his third postseason game. Pitch on the way, upstairs, and a ball to Parker Martin, 1 and 1. I think the Ridgepoint fans are not going to let up tonight. Rotberg looks over at Dossett, and a slow throw over. 
One thing that I've noticed in the high school game is that fans don't necessarily boo when there's a throw over to first base. But I guess if you do it too often or you're just bent on yelling, you may hear it. Here's the 1-1. Upstairs for a ball, and the attempt by Landon West, the catcher, to frame it does not win the umpire's favorable call for Tompkins. So it's 2-1. and one. Rotberg comes set. Brings it, and that hits Martin. We got two guys on. That hit him in the fleshy part right above the elbow, and he's feeling no pain. He's at first base. Gossett moves to second. Now Justin Vosses, who's been hitting better than anyone on the Ridgepoint team in the postseason, and even 400. He's 8 for 20, a pair of doubles. He's got eight hits, and he's driven in five runs. That leads the team in that category. Digs in with the back foot in the right-handed batter's box. Ridgepoint fans at full throat. First pitch. High and away for a ball. Rotberg having a hard time finding the strike zone. There is a strong wind blowing out to left field. Travis Vlasic waits on deck. There's a little tapper toward third, charging it as Benavides. He's going to throw to first base, and it is in time to get Vossus. However, Dossett moves to third, and Martin moves to second. I didn't think that Vossus hit that ball as hard as he actually did. I thought it was going to be such a slow roller that Benavides was going to be hard-pressed to throw him out. But now Travis Vlasic who on the first pitch that he saw in the seventh inning got a single to get things started for Ridgepoint. Their five-pitch comeback scored two runs and a walk-off has them leading this series one game to none. Travis Vlasic, right-handed hitter. And now we have a timeout as Kyle Humphreys, the head coach for Tompkins, is already coming out of the dugout. He wants to talk to his pitcher, Solomon Rotberg. Vlasic right behind Vossis in postseason batting average. He's hitting 350, 7 4 20 with a double. And he's got two RBIs. Principal Leonard Brogan is at the ball game, and I think anybody who loves the Panthers is at the game. You even got people who love the Tigers. I see Katie Kilgore, the softball coach for Travis, is here. Carter Welch, assistant baseball coach at Travis and the son of Clinton Welch is here. And people are still arriving. This is the center of the high school baseball universe tonight. The winner of this series will face either Pearland or Clear Creek. And Pearland beat Clear Creek on Clear Creek's home field last night with a run in the top of the seventh to win three to two. So Rotberg now has heard what his coach had to say. He's got a baseball that he wants. And Vlasic steps in. He's capable of home run power. Pitch from Rotberg. Takes one outside for a ball. So the mound chat does not yield immediate results, but we'll see. Rotberg taking his time with runners at second and third. He pitches from the stretch. Vlasic swings over a curveball, and it's one and one. If Tompkins wins tonight's game, then we'll be right back. Well, we'll be right back on the air at 7 o'clock tomorrow for the first pitch, and the game would be played at Seven Lakes. Vlasic ready. Wait on the back foot. Rotberg brings it. And that is line toward center field, backing up LaViolette. He makes the catch on the run. And coming on home to score is Mason Dossett. It is one to nothing, Ridge Point. One out in the top of the first inning.
Sack fly for Vlasic. And Vlasic picks up his third RBI of the postseason. And now J.J. Kennett, one of the heroes last night, hit a double. And a courtesy runner for him. It was Jake Stratton who came to run for him after Kennett's double, and Stratton scored the winning run. First pitch to J.J. is a curveball on the outside corner for a strike. J.J., 4 for 17 in the postseason, three runs batted in. And two doubles, including the big one last night. Still a hard wind blowing out toward left field. Rotberg with runners sec uh, at third base. Here's a pitch outside. Parker Martin would love to come home. And by the way, there's a lot of room between home plate and the backstop here. So if anything happens to get past the catcher, Landon West, Parker Martin could get home. He's doing everything he can to distract Rotberg. The 1-1 one -one to Kennett, outside, not even close. So when Rotberg is missing, he's missing by a pretty good margin. They're not borderline pitches. Here comes the 2-1, and that bounces in, and West keeps it in front. But Parker Martin really wants to get home from third base. The count is now three and one, and J.J. can count on getting a pretty good pitch. But Rotberg is one of those pitchers that's not afraid to throw the breaking, st uh, breaking stuff when he really needs to throw a strike. Here it comes. Way upstairs, ball four. Second walk of the inning issued by Rotberg. Runners at the corners and two outs. And now it'll be Carter Groen who drove in the game winner last night. So he has two walk-offs in the 2022 postseason. One of them was a sacrifice fly to win game one against Westside. Blaine Ryan is running at first base for Kennett. Rowan has a pair of doubles and he's four for 20 on the postseason with two runs driven in. Each one obviously won a game for Ridgepoint. Rotberg looks at Ryan, brings it, and that is down low for a ball. The home plate umpire last night, who was at third base last night, called an excellent strike zone. And the home plate umpire looks like he's going by the book tonight as well. Rotberg comes set. Here's the 1-0. Rowan thought it was inside. He backed up a little bit, but... It was called a strike on the inside corner, and I can't speak to that because of the angle that I have. But it's one and one. Here's Rotberg's pitch, way upstairs. Two and one. You heard what the fan said, I think, that there's already someone in the bullpen. I don't know that that's true. Here's the 2-1. And he hits it high in the air. Short right field. Coming in is the right fielder, Tyler Brownlee, and he makes the catch. Ridge Point gets one run on a sacrifice fly. And coming to bat will be the Tompkins Falcons when we return on BikeFortBend.com. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavanaugh with Needville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. 
Coming in at five foot three inches, it's number one mom. She switched to Xfinity and got the all new three for one bundle. Unlimited internet, streaming, and Xfinity mobile. All for what you could pay wireless companies for just one 5G unlimited line. Boom shakalaka. That's why they call her the master of moolah, the sultan of savings, the queen of cash. And now, also with Xfinity Internet, you can get unlimited data, Wi-Fi equipment, and a free Flex 4K streaming box included with a two-year rate guarantee and no term contract. All for just $30 per month when you add an Xfinity mobile plan at regular rates. Go to Xfinity.com slash 3 for 1, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store today. Limited time offer, restrictions apply. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. New fast internet 300 megabits per second customers only. Xfinity Mobile requires post pay Xfinity internet. After 24 months, regular rates apply to all services and devices. Right hander Hunter Nichols took the mound in game one of the first two series that Rich Point had during these playoffs, but tonight he gets the ball in game two. He's 0 1 with a 3.41 ERA in the postseason. He started the game and didn't get a decision in game one against Westside, and he was the starter and loser of game one against Seven Lakes. 12 and one-thirds innings pitched, seven hits allowed, six runs, all of them earned eight strikeouts and nine walks. He needs to control the walks, and he pitches to Cash Russell, and the first pitch is a strike on the outside corner. Cash Russell hitting 238 in the postseason, five for 21. Nichols brings the next one and it bounces in, one and one. Nichols standing atop the mound with a long look in at his catcher, J.J. Kennett, ready to bring the one one, here it comes. Upstairs, it goes all the way to the backstop. Kennett is the catcher for Ridge Point. Travis Vlasic is the first baseman. Zion Stevens at second. Justin Vosses at short. The third baseman is Parker Martin in left field, Carter Groen, Mason Dossett in center, and Owen Ferris in right field. Pitch to Russell. Swings and misses at the high heat, and it's two and two. They started to play that sound effect, and then they realized Nichols is about to throw the ball. Here comes the 2-2. High in the air, foul ground on the right side. Ferris and Vlasic both giving it a look, but it goes out of play. And the count remains, 2-2. BikeFortBend.com has broadcasted from this ballpark one time, and Kempner lost a game three to Tompkins. Pitch is high by Nichols, and the count goes to 3-2 and two on Cash Russell. Russell has only drawn one walk in the postseason. Nichols brings it, and it's hit high in the air. Foul ground on the right side. Vlasic looking for it near the line. Now it's Nichols, and he makes the catch. That was up in the air a long, long time. I'm just glad they were able to find it. We have some very high wispy clouds as the twilight is falling. Now the left-handed hitting Jace LaViolette. Two homers in the postseason already, and the first pitch is upstairs for a ball to LaViolette. He hit both of those homers in the Lamar series, and he had a sacrifice fly. Here's the 1-0. Breaking ball in there. Not what LaViolette was expecting, so he said, I'll look for something better. Steps back with a count of one and one. Now right back in there. Nichols looks over the top of his glove and brings the one one. Upstairs, two and one. Laviolette is four for 17. He's driven in four runs and he can walk even though he's got a big strike zone. He's walked five times in postseason games. Here's the pitch. And he fouls it out of play. It's now two and two. And a nice uh, barehanded catch by Jack Little, who's in the on-deck circle. I mean, he has a batting glove on, but other than that, he's barehanded. 
And the ball rebounded off the top of the net. It's two and two. Nichols brings it. Down and in for a ball, and he's gone to three and two on the first two hitters. Here comes the payoff pitch. And it's inside for a ball. I think it was at knee level. Laviolette has not stolen a base in postseason, and I don't know what kind of speed he has, but I do know that he's a big dude, and it's kind of intimidating to have him running at you. So I'm sure that's in the mind of Justin Vosses and Zion Stevens, just in case one of them has to take a throw. And now it is Jack Little. Right-handed hitter. First pitch bounces in. Kennett does a great job to slide over and keep in front of it. And it's one and nothing on Jack Little. A triple, two doubles, and hitting 400 in the postseason. Six for 15. Nichols looks over at LaViolette. Now brings the 1-0. Breaking ball outside. Little is a switch hitter, so if there's a game three tomorrow, he might be batting. Well, he's he's already batting right-handed against a right-hander, so even though he's listed as a switch hitter, I don't think that's going to happen if Jack McKernan will be on the mound, which I would expect if there's a game three. 2-0 and oh the count. Nichols brings it. LaViolette bluffs a go. And the pitch is fouled back into the screen. Little looks down at the third base coaching box. Kyle Humphreys gives him the signals. Tompkins wearing their white, navy blue pinstripe uniforms. Throwing over and it's a little bit of a high throw to Vlasic. You know, Vlasic's a pretty big kid himself. But standing next to LaViolette, he looks kind of like a pony leaguer. No offense, Trav. Nichols takes his time, and now Little gets tired of waiting. He asks for time. There's some nice homes in very close range of the left field fence. I guess if you really hammered one, you might be able to hit it into their backyard. 2-1 pitch. High to right field. Going back is Ferris near the wall. Jumps and makes a great diving catch. Makes a great diving catch. And will they double up on the left? Almost. Almost. What a great catch by Owen Ferris. And he's getting congratulations from Mason Dossett out there. Oh, my goodness. And appreciation from the Ridgepoint fans. That's worthy of da-da-da, da-da-da. By the way, we are graced by the presence of Chancellor Johnson of KPRC Local 2 Sports. He's setting up his tripod, so I guess highlights of this game are going to be on Local 2. And by the way, Todd Freed sent his main videographer, Jeff Mathis, out to game one last night. Highlights of that will be on H-Town High School Sports Saturday night. All right, here we go. Drew Markle stands in, takes a curveball high, one and nothing. One out after that beautiful catch by Ferris in right field. He was streaking toward the gap, left his feet, and gloved it. Here's the 1-0. That is hit high in the air, foul back behind us over the screen. Two outs now. Cash Russell led off the inning with a pop-up. Jace Laviolette walked, but he's still at first base. And they almost doubled him off after that great catch by Ferris. Pitch on the way. Slow breaking ball catches the outside corner. It's one and two. Ridge Point leading one to nothing 
We're in the bottom of the first. Markle, he's a blonde. I don't know if it's uh, peroxide bleach blonde or if it's natural, just can't tell. Throw over, Laviolette is back. Nichols is ready to go, comes set. Now brings it, high and away for a ball. It's two and two on Drew Markle. Markle is hitting an even 300 in the postseason, six for 20. Three RBIs. Nichols brings the 2-2, just missed the outside corner. Kennett tried to frame it, but yet another 3-2 count. That's happened three times as Nichols has been pitching this bottom of the first. The payoff pitch and LaViolette takes off and it's a pop-up. It's going to get behind the screen and it might draw aluminum. It did. Nobody had the guts to go after that. I can't believe that. Ridgepoint got a sacrifice fly to get on the scoreboard in the top of the first, and they're trying to keep Tompkins off the board here. Drew Markle ready for another 3-2 pitch, and with two outs and LaViolette at first, LaViolette will take off. Here comes the pitch, and it's fouled straight back into the screen again. Devin McComas, relief pitcher for the Panthers, making himself useful coming out of the dugout to retrieve foul balls. Night is falling, sun is not a problem. We've got a layer of clouds that's keeping the bright sunlight out of people's eyes. And here comes yet another 3-2. Pitch on the way. And that is line foul sliced into the gathering gloom on the right. Home plate umpire is saying, hey, we already need more baseballs. Three come in from, make it four, come in from the Ridge Point side, and one or two came over from the Topkins side. So Nichols having to throw a lot of pitches in this first inning. Another one to Markle. Swing and a foul tip into Kennett's mitt. Strikeout for Hunter Nichols to retire the side. No runs on, no hits, no errors. One man left on base. And we'll proceed to the second inning. Ridge point one, Topkins nothing in game two. If Ridge Point wins, they get a sweep. Coming in at five foot three inches, it's number one mom. She switched to Xfinity and got the all new three for one bundle. Unlimited internet, streaming, and Xfinity mobile. All for what you could pay wireless companies for just one 5G unlimited line. Boom shakalaka. That's why they call her the master of moolah, the sultan of savings, the queen of cash. And now, also with Xfinity Internet, you can get unlimited data, Wi-Fi equipment, and a free Flex 4K streaming box included with a two-year rate guarantee and no term contract. All for just $30 per month when you add an Xfinity mobile plan at regular rates. Go to Xfinity.com slash 3 for 1, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store today. Limited time offer, restrictions apply. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. New fast internet 300 megabits for second customers only. Xfinity Mobile requires post pay Xfinity internet. After 24 months, regular rates apply to all services and devices. We see all you do to get work done, whether it's keeping your office clean or redesigning your space for three or 300. Our business is to keep business going. Buy online and pick up in store or get free next business day shipping at Office Depot, Office Max, and OfficeDepot.com. We want to thank the folks at Office Depot, Southwest Freeway at Williams Trace in Sugarland, taking care of business every day 
so we can bring you Fort Bend County sports every week. The Ridgepoint Panthers, the last team standing, the champions of District 26A baseball, and they're in the third round of the playoffs. And I think it is accurate to say that they are leading the favored Tompkins Falcons in this playoff series, one game to none. Tompkins in the latest poll, that's the one that came out on May 2nd, the Diamond Pro Texas High School Baseball.com poll, number two in the state, Ridgepoint at number five in the state. Now here is Owen Ferris. Ferris looking to bust loose with solid offensive production in this game. And the first pitch from Rotberg is high for a ball. The bugaboo for Rotberg in the first when he gave up the run on the sacrifice fly was getting behind in the count, throwing too many balls. Here's the 1-0. Ferris lofts one to left center. Rushing in is LaViolette. He calls everybody else off and makes the play. One out. There were a whole lot of fly ball outs in last night's game. Now Quinn Pfeiffer. Pfeiffer has had a hard time getting going with the bat here in the postseason. But Coach Welch showing the confidence in the right-handed hitter. Rotberg brings him the first one way upstairs. Pfeiffer also has excellent speed. Just his third plate appearance of the postseason. Pitch on the way. And it's a little chopper toward third, but it rolls into the foul ground grass. And coming up to get it is Adam Benavides. Pfeiffer taking his time, looks down there at Coach Welch in the third base box as night continues to fall. Rotberg brings the 1-1 way upstairs to Pfeiffer. Quinn wouldn't mind taking a walk. He could put that speed to use. And speaking of speed, Zion Stevens is in the on-deck circle. Rotberg rocks and fires way upstairs, 3-1. The stands are overflowing. There's a lot of people standing. There are a lot of lawn chairs. Here's the 3-1. Pfeiffer takes strike two. He thought he had ball four, and he ran about 20 feet toward first base. I got here nice and early, so I knew I would have a good spot. It's the only thing to do. And Rotberg ready to bring the payoff pitch. And it's fouled back behind us and to the right. Pfeiffer stays alive. So I guess uh, maybe Rotberg's favorite movie was Jaws or maybe his grandparents' favorite movie was Jaws. Pitch in the dirt, ball four to Pfeiffer. Third walk by Rotberg, and we're just in the second inning, and now Zion Stevens. Stevens has a postseason double. He's also walked four times. He doesn't mind drawing a walk. But I know he wants to barrel one up. I just know it. First pitch way upstairs. Everybody's got to be available for Tompkins other than the guy who pitched for them last night, Trevor Esparza, who went the distance. One and nothing on Stevens. Pitch on the way. Swings and misses. A nice rip. He just wants to keep working till he gets to that point where the ball looks like a grapefruit or even a volleyball up there. One and one the count. Here's the pitch to Stevens way upstairs. And Rotberg, when he misses the strike zone, continues to miss by a lot. Let's go, 
Here's Dust blowing across the infield. Not real bad, but even though they watered the field down very well, it's still there. 2-1 is upstairs, 3-1 on Stevens. And now the catcher, Landon West, wants to go out there and talk to Rotberg. And also the first baseman, Jack Little, goes over there. Stevens, meanwhile, goes down there halfway between home and third to talk with Coach Welch. Both conversations are pretty short. Dossett, tonight's leadoff hitter, waits to bat next. Stevens might get a good fastball here. Because Rot Rotberg cannot afford to walk another man in this inning. Swing and a miss. And it's three and two. So he's gone to a full count on both hitters. In this top of the second, Ridgepoint leading it one to nothing. Pfeiffer drew the walk. And West was about to do another mound visit. And I think his coaches said, no, don't go out there again on consecutive pitches. All right, three and two. Pitch to Stevens. Down and out for ball four, two men on. Four walks already for Rotberg, and now it's Dossett. Dossett drew the first of those walks when he let off the game. You'd be hard-pressed to find three faster players on the bases at a baseball game with Pfeiffer at second, Stevens at first, and now Dossett in the batter's box. And Landon West, the catcher, goes out there to talk to Rotberg. It was last Friday night when Tompkins lost to Lamar in their game two. And so, meanwhile, back at Stratford, Ridgepoint was sweeping west side. So the Panthers got to go to the game three on Saturday night if they wanted to between Tompkins and Lamar. All right, so Dossett stands in. The lefty Rotberg ready to work. One to nothing, Ridgepoint, top of the second. Rotberg gets the sign he wants, comes set, and brings it way upstairs. One and nothing. A look of frustration on Rotberg's face. He just can't seem to find the strike zone consistently, at least not yet. And now Coach Humphreys is coming out of the dugout again. And we'll see if we're going to get a pitching change. Now, in high school baseball, you don't necessarily have to make a pitching change when you go out the second time. However, Rotberg is going to be replaced. We'll tell you who the new man on the mound will be for Tompkins when we return. This is VipeFortBend.com. I'll never forget the day I decided to go out for the football team. Mr. Banks, the JV football coach and my history teacher, asked me to stay after class. I thought I was in trouble. He said, hey, Darius, have you thought about going out for football? I think you'd be great. Fact is, I never played football. Fact is, I never had anyone tell me I'd be great at something. So, with no experience at all, I signed up. And a week later, I padded up and was running drills on the field. I never was great, but playing high school sports was one of the greatest experiences of my life. I was accepted by my teammates, and I learned that when someone believes in you, you can believe in yourself. Encourage a student you know to take part in a high school sport. This message presented by the UIL and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Don't miss the UIL Baseball State Championship starting Wednesday, June 8th at UFCU Dishfalk Field in Austin. 
and Dell Diamond in Round Rock. Ticket information and more can be found at UILTexas.org. The new pitcher for Tompkins is right-hander Michael DeBattista. Numbers on DeBattista. He was the starter and winner in Game 3 Saturday against Lamar when Tompkins' back was against the wall and he had a relief appearance with no decision in Game 2 against Elkins. He's 1-0 with an ERA of 0.81. He's covered five and two-thirds innings, six hits allowed, three runs. One of those earned. He struck out six and walked six. And he'll inherit a 1-0 count against Mason Dossett. And he's got his infielders just kind of smiling at him, trying to make him feel loose. They are smiling. He looks kind of nervous. But this is definitely a high leverage situation, even though we're just in the top of the second. If there is a game three tomorrow night, we will have it for you. 6.40 start time for the batter up show and seven o'clock first pitch. And the game would be at Seven Lakes. Now, 1-0 on Dossett, and De Batista steps up there. Quinn Pfeiffer walked. He's at second. Zion Stevens also walked. He's at first. De Batista looks back at Pfeiffer. Curve ball. Outside corner strike to Dossett. That evens the count one and one. A hard wind continues to blow out to left field. Dossett ready for the 1-1. Here it comes, and it bounces in. West blocking it with his chest protector, and the runners stay where they are. I'm not sure what the crowd is reacting to. West picked up the ball, and he pointed somewhere. I don't know what it was for. And I can't tell which fan base is angry. One and two is the count. Oh, I know, it was an appeal. And they said that Dossett swung at that pitch in the dirt. So it's one and two. So the Ridgepoint fans were upset. Here's the one, two. Dossett takes a call, third strike on the outside corner. So De Batista steps in and immediately gets a strikeout. That's out number two. Now it's Parker Martin to make sure that uh, Ridgepoint gets a little something else on the board here in this top of the second. Two outs, runners at first and second. De Bautista brings it. Martin checks his swing, but he went around. Strike one. Martin hit by a pitch in the first inning. They're chanting P-Mart, and what we really need on the Ridgepoint side is for Justin Vosses to get up there. He's waiting on deck. Nothing and one the count on Parker Martin. Righty working to lefty. This is his first look at De Batista. Here comes the 0-1. Curve ball upstairs and it's one and one. Esparza, the Tompkins ace, was untouchable for six innings and make that six and two thirds innings. But then Ridgepoint caught lightning in a bottle, won the game last night and now Tompkins is having to do whatever they can to eat up these seven innings and find enough runs to keep from getting swept. Pitch to P-Mart, has to wait. Now a turn around and a look back at second. Pfeiffer goes back to the bag even though no one was there. Near the back of the left-handed batter's box, Parker Martin waiting patiently. De Bautista comes set. 
Now he brings it. Foul tip, and it goes to the backstop. One and two. I think they're doing some kind of Beethoven symphony at Jones Hall this weekend, but I wasn't planning on going. One and two on Parker Martin. This could be a very big pitch right here. De Bautista brings it, and Martin fouls it off. Great job of spoiling a tough breaking pitch. The return throw to De Bautista got away from him, but the ball was dead because it was a foul ball out of play. Martin looking for something he can drive on a one-two pitch. De Batista brings it. And that's a ground ball toward first base and it gets underneath the glove of Little. Here comes Pfeiffer to score, it's two to nothing. Steven stops at third. And that's uh, really a bad break for Tompkins. It was kind of a no man's land between Little and the second baseman, Cash Russell. Little tried to backhand it, and the ball did hit leather, but it scooted underneath the glove and into right field. So now it is two to nothing. On the play, Parker Martin doesn't get past first. We'll call that a hit because of where it was hit. I think he might have beaten it out anyway. And now it's Bossus. 0 for 1 with a ground ball to third base. RBI single for Parker Martin. We'll see if they put him in motion. First pitch to Vasas. He hammers it toward left field. It's well hit, but it is caught by the left fielder, Ty Dagley, who went back at first and then had to really beat feet to get it before it hit the ground. So that line drive to left field ends things for Ridge Point in the top of the second. However, they do pick up a run on the RBI single by Parker Martin. And after an inning and a half, it's Ridge Point 2, Tompkins nothing on VipeFortBend.com. Coming in at five foot three inches, it's number one mom. She switched to Xfinity and got the all new three for one bundle. Unlimited internet, streaming, and Xfinity mobile. All for what you could pay wireless companies for just one 5G unlimited line. Boom shakalaka. That's why they call her the master of moolah, the sultan of savings, the queen of cash. And now, also with Xfinity Internet, you can get unlimited data, Wi-Fi equipment, and a free Flex 4K streaming box included with a two-year rate guarantee and no term contract. All for just $30 per month when you add an Xfinity mobile plan at regular rates. Go to Xfinity.com slash 3 for 1, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store today. Limited time offer, restrictions apply. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. New fast internet 300 megabits for second customers only. Xfinity Mobile requires post pay Xfinity internet. After 24 months, regular rates apply to all services and devices. It'll be catcher Landon West leading off for Tompkins in the bottom of the second, then Ty Dagley and Adam Benavides. West likes to wear those tube socks high. Wears his baseball pants Altuve style. He's three for 19 in the playoffs. He has a double and three runs driven in. First pitch to him is low for a ball one from Hunter Nichols. Nichols drying off his pitching hand on the side of the baseball pants. It is warm and humid. Here's the 1-0. That is also down for a ball. According to my iPhone, the uh, temperature has gone down six degrees since the first pitch from 90 to 84. The 2-0 pitch misses the inside corner and Nichols falls behind 
three and oh. Looks over the top of the glove, brings the 3-0. Strike to West. Ready for the 3-1. West takes ball four low. Now that he's been spotted to a 2-0 lead, Nichols I know didn't want to walk the leadoff man. Courtesy runner for Tompkins. And that's Judson Collier. Now Ty Dagley hitting 222 in the postseason. He's got a sacrifice fly. He's four for 18. He's driven in five runs. And that is tied for the team lead with Adam Benavides. Nichols comes set. Righty working to lefty. Dagley backs away from the first one. It's ball inside. Nichols looking out from under the white cap with the purple visor that the Panthers are wearing tonight. And now a throw over. And back in is Collier, the courtesy runner. Nichols, the senior right-hander, brings the 1-0. Down and in. Kennett steps out in front of the plate, asks the umpire for time, and wants to go to talk and chat up Hunter Nichols. And that conversation was short. Dagley ready for the 2-0, but first a throw over. Vlasic applies the tag on Collier. Collier is 0 for 1 stealing bases in the postseason. Pitch on the way. There's a strike, 2 and 1. Coach Humphreys has not been very aggressive with stealing bases in the postseason. He's got the, the kind of offensive attack where you really don't have to risk getting someone thrown out on a stolen base attempt. And there's a ground ball, could be two. Vasa steps on second himself, on to first for a double play. Six to three it goes. And there are two outs and the bases are clean for Adam Benavides. They like it. They being the Ridgepoint fans, the Tompkins folks. For them it's a Maalox moment. Now Adam Benavides. First pitch to him is way upstairs. He's hitting 286 in these playoffs. He's got a pair of sacrifice flies. He's four for 14 overall, and he shares that RBI lead with Dagley, as we mentioned. Here's the 1-0, and that is to right field. Ferris giving it a run near the foul line. It drops in. It is fair, and because Ferris got there quickly, it's just going to be a single. Oh, that double play sure looks good now. because Tompkins, if not for that double play, would have had possibly a run. They would have cut the lead in half, but it's two to nothing Ridge Point. And now the Falcons turn to Tyler Brownlee, their right fielder. You know, last night I heard the same chant coming out of the stands when Tyler Brownlee was batting. That's what the same thing that Ridgepoint kids were saying. First pitch from Nichols. Down for a ball. It was over the plate but low. And shows you how in touch I am with social networking. I was thinking they were saying Banaka, which would imply that somebody had bad breath. 
But that's not what they were saying. Before the 1-0 pitch, a throw over. And Benavides dives back in. I'm actually playing dumb. I know better. I know what they were chanting. You can go back and listen to the podcast. Here's the 1-0. Swung on and fouled back into the vinyl pad. And it sounded <laughs> kind of like a cannonball going off. And the count is 1-1 one one on Tyler Brownlee. The hits are even at one, but Ridgepoint leads it two to nothing and a throw over. Again, Benavides is back. Brownlee taps the outside corner of the plate, then the inside corner, digs in. Nichols comes set. Here comes the one-one. Swing and a foul straight back into the screen. And I think if he had left that alone, it might have been ball two, but it's one and two. Right-handed hitter Brownlee takes his time stepping back in. Nichols brings it, bounces in, and the pitch gets away, bounces off of Kennett, and that enables Benavides to get to second. Hard to know what to call that, but I'm going to call it a pass ball. And the count is two and two on Brownlee. Ivan Gomez, the DH, would bat next. If Brownlee can reach. Swing and a miss. Down goes Brownlee. Second strikeout for Hunter Nichols to retire the side. And after two full innings of play, Ridge Point two, Tompkins nothing in this game two where the Panthers have the opportunity to sweep. We'll be right back. Hello, I'm Gary Horn with Horn Solutions. We agree with energy analysts that the energy market has stabilized. We anticipate significant merger and acquisition activity. Good resources are scarce. Horn Solutions is positioned to assist you in accounting, finance, IT, and supply chain. Our staff can assist you with outsourcing, or we can supply you with resources to join your staff. Visit hornsolutions.net for details. Gary Horn is a highly successful businessman who has made a huge impact in people's lives, and he loves what he does for a living. That's a big reason why Gary Horn and Horn Solutions support Get a Great Gig. Get a Great Gig is a free job search consultation service that will help you find a job you love, whether it's to make more money or get personal fulfillment in the career of your choice. Email them at getagreatgig at gmail.com or on Twitter at getgreatgigs. First Siren Automotive, serving Fort Bend County drivers for over 20 years, salutes and congratulates the graduating class of 2022. Wherever the road takes you, you can be sure that you'll need professional auto care along the way. First Siren Automotive's four locations throughout Fort Bend County are the perfect pit stops for all of your auto repair and maintenance needs. Check out the website, firsttireandauto.com, for great savings. The First Siren Automotive technicians can fix all problems on any make or model. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. FirstTireAndAuto.com. Travis Vlasic leads off the third inning for the Panthers, who lead it two to nothing. De Batista brings the first pitch. First pitch swinging. It's going to hang up in right center field. A long run, but it drops. Oh my goodness! It was equidistant between Jace Laviolette and Tyler Brownlee, and I know, you know. Newton's laws of motion and Galileo and all that stuff but that ball just looked heavy I thought it was going to stay up in the air and hang up for either Laviolette or Brownlee but it dropped in and that's the second hit for the Panthers Vlasic at first and now Kennett drew a walk in the first inning
First pitch to J.J., breaking ball, and he fouls it out of play on the right side. Kenneth really came through with a first pitch double in the seventh inning last night. That drove home the tying run at that point. Ridgepoint was kind of playing with house money. They knew they would at least get to extra innings. But then they won it before the seventh was over. The 0-1 to Kennett. Breaking ball in there, 0-2. Kennett doesn't stand right on top of the plate. He has his distance, likes to get that extension when he reaches for the outside pitch. 0-2 on the way, called strike three. Kennett didn't think so, but he'll head to the dugout. One out, De Batista now gets his second K of the evening. And it's Carter Groen. Gave the ball a ride to right field his first time. And I want to double check just to make sure there are no changes on defense for Tompkins, and there are none. The only thing that changed was the pitcher when De Batista came in for Rotberg. There's a throw over, and Vlasic is back in. <laughs> I think they've been doing some research on De Batista, too. Righty versus righty. First pitch to Groen. Breaking ball, he checks his swing and it's low for ball one. Landon West is the catcher for Tompkins. Looks over at his dugout. Sends the message to De Batista. here comes the 1-0. And Groen swung at it. It's a strike, but it went all the way to the backstop. It got underneath the mitt of the catcher, West. And I'm not really sure what happened there, possibly a cross up. But I'm gonna call that a pass ball. I've been rough on both catchers already. But Vlasic is in scoring position with one out. One and one, the count on Groen. De Batista ready. And he steps off. Everybody in the stands for Ridgepoint knows the pitcher's name, that's for sure. Rowan patiently waiting for the 1-1. One -one. Here it comes. And that is smoked through the right side. Here comes Vlasic around third. They will send him home. Here is the throw. It is not in time. Vlasic scores. It is three to nothing Ridgepoint on an RBI single for Carter Groen. It's a great start for Ridgepoint. Three straight up and down numbers in the first three innings and a three nothing lead. Now Owen Ferris flied out to center field his first time and wow, what a catch he made earlier to keep Tompkins off the board. You know Hunter Nichols, his pitcher was very appreciative of it. Also appreciative of a three nothing lead. Groen leading off of first base and now Ferris digs in. De Bautista brings it. First pitch swinging, and he ropes it down the left field line. It's down for a hit, but it's only going to be a single, and Groen stops at second. That had a lot of topspin on it. Runners at first and second, and now Quinn Pfeiffer. Reached base with a walk in the second. At Tompkins... There is a bullpen, but there is opaque fence covering that makes it impossible to see. So 
I can't tell you if anybody's warming up for the Falcons. So this is Pfeiffer's first look at De Batista. Pitch on the way. Breaking ball, just missed the outside corner. Went and over the count on Pfeiffer. Wiggling the bat behind his head. The 1-0. Breaking ball, fooled him badly. But that's why they give you three. And it's one and one. Pfeiffer goes down to talk to Coach Welch between third and home. No conversation by Tompkins. De Bautista just staying out there on the mound, cleaning out his spikes. Ridgepoint feeling pretty giddy over there in the first base dugout with a 3-0 lead and an opportunity to expand it right here. Pfeiffer bouncing with the front foot. De Batista comes set, now comes home. Upstairs, and a throw down to second base, is, and Groen is back. He actually, uh, the ball bounced off of him, and that kept it from going into center field. Two and one the count on Pfeiffer. When I hear the last name Pfeiffer, I think of Paul Pfeiffer, you know, the best friend of Kevin Arnold on the original Wonder Years. I love that show. Here's the 2-1. Breaking ball, outside corner, strike. 2-2. Two and two. Pfeiffer looks at Coach Welch. He wanted to go through the signs for Pfeiffer and both base runners. They're beating their feet on the bleachers on the Ridge Point side. Here comes the 2-2. Swing and a miss. Big strikeout for De Batista. His third. And there are two away. And now it is up to Zion Stevens. And like a big old glass of Metamucil, I'll bet if he could hit a gapper right here, He'd be right back in the offensive groove. Three to nothing Ridge Point, single runs in each of the first three innings, but they're trying to add one more in the third. And Stevens got tired of waiting, so he steps out. Groen is at second. Ferris is at first. First pitch to Stevens. Breaking ball in there for a strike. Standing near the front of the box. Big encouragement from the Ridge Point students. Here comes the 0-1. Upstairs, evens the count. The ball gets away from De Batista, but Groen, I don't think he could have made it to third anyway. Although he didn't immediately see it scored out of De Batista's glove on the return throw. One and one the count. Stevens digging in. De Batista brings it. Breaking ball in there for a strike. It's one and two. A wind blowing out to left. See if Zion can pull one. Pitch on the way. There go the runners, and wait a minute, I think time was called by Stevens. Oh, that's a shame. 
That might have been a double steal. All right. I want to thank the Markle family for scoring the game. They do a game changer page, and so too does Colette Mihalis, a great Ridgepoint mom. Now I have two scoreboards I can look at. Here's a one two. Outside, two and two. Good take by Stevens. In the mode he's in right now, he's been kind of hesitant to swing, either hesitant to swing or sometimes swinging at the first pitch. All right, two and two. De Batista looks in at his catcher West, gets the sign, brings, well, not yet. He looks back at second, nobody was covering, and Groen just walks back to the bag. Groen drove in Vlasic with a base hit earlier. And there's another throw over to first base. It was very close, but Ferris got back. And the first baseman, Jack Little, did a somersault, and he's still sitting in the dirt. Now he's up. They almost got Ferris leaning there. 3 hits for Ridgepoint in the inning. They only had one before this inning started. Stevens wants to jump on a good opportunity, the 2-2, and it's off the end of the bat right back to De Batista. He's going to underhand it to Little at first, and that retires the side, but Ridgepoint scores again on the RBI single by Groen that brought home Vlasic. Three hits in the inning, but they leave a couple. And we'll go to the bottom of the third. Ridge point three and Tompkins nothing on bikefortbend.com. Coming in at five foot three inches, it's number one mom. She switched to Xfinity and got the all new three for one bundle. Unlimited internet, streaming, and Xfinity mobile. All for what you could pay wireless companies for just one 5G unlimited line. Boom shakalaka. That's why they call her the master of moolah, the sultan of savings, the queen of cash. And now, also with Xfinity Internet, you can get unlimited data, Wi-Fi equipment, and a free Flex 4K streaming box included with a two-year rate guarantee and no term contract. All for just $30 per month when you add an Xfinity mobile plan at regular rates. Go to Xfinity.com slash 3 for 1, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store today. Limited time offer, restrictions apply. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. New fast internet 300 megabits per second customers only. Xfinity Mobile requires post pay Xfinity internet. After 24 months, regular rates apply to all services and devices. So, so with De Batista in, in relief of Solomon Rotberg, we want to close the book on Rotberg. He threw one and one thirds innings, 39 pitches thrown, but less than 39% of them were strikes. He didn't give up any hits. All the hits have been surrendered by De Batista, but he did give up two runs, both of those earned. Four walks proved to be the undoing of Solomon Rotberg. Meanwhile, Hunter Nichols is out there. There's some kind of delay to start the bottom of the third. I'm not really sure what it is. Maybe they're trying to get a laser pointer out of the stands or something like that. But uh, here's Hunter Nichols through two innings. 41 pitches, 51% strikes. He's given up one hit, but no runs. He struck out two and walked two. So I think the Topkins fans are cheering, possibly because someone from Ridgepoint might have been removed for uh, shining something. I don't know. I'm really not sure. Now it's Ivan Gomez, the DH. Batting originally for the pitcher Rotberg and the first pitch to him is a ball. So now he's batting in place of De Batista. The 1-0 pitch from Hunter Nichols and it's a bullet right back through the middle into center field for a base hit. Falcons number nine man gets on. 
Very, very solid contact off of Hunter Nichols. The first time anybody's really hit the ball hard off of him. And now back to the top we go and Cash Russell. J.J. Kennett, you can see the catcher with his head on a swivel looking around. The infield at double play depth. Ridgepoint already has one double play. Breaking ball down. One and nothing to count on Cash Russell. In the first inning, he popped up to Hunter Nichols on the infield grass. Nichols brings the 1-0. Just missed the outside corner. It's two and nothing. Gomez, by the way, is one for two stealing bases in this postseason. A lot of noise in the ballpark. Here's the 2-0. And he missed the corner again. It's three and oh. And now Kennett asks for time, and Coach Welch comes out of the dugout as well. We'll be back after this word from the Office Depot. We see all you do to get work done, whether it's keeping your office clean or redesigning your space for three or 300. Our business is to keep business going. Buy online and pick up in store, or get free next business day shipping at Office Depot, Office Max, and OfficeDepot.com. We want to thank the Office Depot, Southwest Freeway at Williams Trace in Sugarland for taking care of business every day so we can bring you Fort Bend County sports every week. We've been bringing you three, four, five, and more games all year long. Here's the 3-0 pitch, and it's upstairs, a four-pitch walk to Cash Russell. They're runners at first and second, and Hunter Nichols needs to start finding the strike zone. A single and a walk, and now Jace Laviolette. He's a left-handed hitter, so going to left field is not his power game, but the wind is blowing out there, and he's capable of driving it out. He could tie the game with one swing. Breaking ball down in the dirt. He lays off, and it's one and nothing. LaViolette walked in inning number one, but he didn't get off of first base. Here's the 1-0 in there for a strike. To the delight of the Ridgepoint faithful. Nichols looks back at Gomez. Brings the 1-1. One, one. Breaking ball, strike. One and two. Roger Smith along with producer extraordinaire, the silent partner, Les Clary, back inside the mothership at Vipe World Headquarters. Here's the 1-2. And it is ripped foul, just missed. The assistant coach in the first base box. If they measured exit velocity in the high school game, Jace LaViolette would get a, a very high number. Nichols brings the one two. No, he doesn't. He looks back at second. And Gomez skips back to second base. All right, here comes the one two. And it's a ground ball. It's Vlasic behind first. He'll take it himself. They get the out there. The other runners move up, but that could be a very important out. Three unassisted goes the play. Gomez to third and Cash Russell to second. Two runners in scoring position for Jack Little. 0 for 1 with a fly ball to right field. 
And an amazing, amazing catch by Owen Ferris. Righty versus righty. Pitch on the way. Curveball just missed inside. Little reacted for a moment as if he thought it was going to hit him. Nichols wants Kennett to go through the signs again. Now he has the one he wants. Here comes the 1-0. Check swing. Did he go around? No, he did not. Two and nothing. Ball was in the dirt. And Nichols almost got Little to chase it. Nichols comes set right in front of his chin. Now brings it. There's a high chop. And it's going to be Vasas on two hops. And it gets under him because he was screened off by the base runner. And two runs come home. That is just tough luck. And nobody did anything wrong. Nobody cheated or anything like that. Although I am kind of curious to see whether a Ridgepoint coach comes out of the dugout. So it's a two-run single for Jack Little. It was a high chopper. And it was Russell who was running from second, and he kind of hesitated to keep the ball out of Vasos's view for just long enough for him to lose track of it. So two runs come home, and it's a much tighter game, three to two. Now Drew Markle, first pitch to him is a ball. You know, Tompkins can hurt you with some big swings, but the way that they have hurt Ridgepoint in this inning is by drawing walks, and they have had one very solid hit. There have been two hits. Gomez hit it hard. Now Markle sends one to center field. Going back is Dossett. It won't carry. He's under it. He's got it. And quickly returns it to the infield. Two outs, and Jack Little returns to first base. Now Landon West, who drew a walk his first time. Ridgepoint has out hit Tompkins four to three and lead three to two. Nichols brings it to West. There goes the runner Little and he's in there with a stolen base. Jack Little got a good jump. Hey, Chancellor. Looking forward to seeing those highlights. That's Chancellor Johnson from Local 2. Let's see, Jack Little is now two for two, stealing bases in this postseason. He is in scoring position with two outs. Pitches high to West. Kennett comes out of his crouch like he was sitting on a spring to make sure it doesn't Go to the backstop, and the count is now one and one. Nichols looks back at Little, who just stole second. The one-one to West, breaking ball down. Kennett stops it, keeps it from getting under the five hole. And it's two and one. Great atmosphere here at Tompkins. Absolutely great crowd on both sides. 2-1 on the way. Check swing. And it's high. It's 3-1 and one on West. He represents the go-ahead run. Wind still blowing out toward left, but it's a little gentler now. Here's the 3-1, curve ball down. Another walk for Hunter Nichols, and now the go-ahead run is at first base. And Ty Dagley will come up. Courtesy runner Justin Collier comes on to run for West.
All right, Ty Dagley is 0 for 1 with a ground ball to shortstop. There's been a lot of traffic in this inning for these Tompkins Falcons. Trying to get the equalizer, if not take the lead. Breaking ball just missed the inside corner. It looked pretty good, but it's ball one to Dagley. Nichols shakes off a sign. Comes set. Brings the 1-0. There's a strike. Dagley didn't think so. But it got over the, the inner border of the plate. One and one. Here comes the one one. That's a fly ball to left field. Groen is under it. And he makes the catch. He hardly had to move. Well, Tompkins did get busy offensively in the bottom half of the third. They get two runs on two hits, no errors, and a couple of men left on base. This is VibeFortBend.com. We'll go to the fourth, Ridgepoint three, and Tompkins two. Coming in at five foot three inches, it's number one mom. She switched to Xfinity and got the all new three for one bundle. Unlimited internet, streaming, and Xfinity mobile. All for what you could pay wireless companies for just one 5G unlimited line. Boom shakalaka. That's why they call her the master of moolah, the sultan of savings, the queen of cash. And now, also with Xfinity Internet, you can get unlimited data, Wi-Fi equipment, and a free Flex 4K streaming box included with a two-year rate guarantee and no term contract. All for just $30 per month when you add an Xfinity mobile plan at regular rates. Go to Xfinity.com slash 3 for 1, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store today. Limited time offer, restrictions apply. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. New fast internet 300 megabits per second customers only. Xfinity Mobile requires post pay Xfinity internet. After 24 months, regular rates apply to all services and devices. A game without a crowd is just a scrimmage. A performance without an audience is just a rehearsal. Without your presence, high school sports and the performing arts aren't possible. Ensure that these essential extracurricular activities continue to enrich the lives of students in Texas. Purchase a ticket to your local high school's game or performance. This message presented by the UIL and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Don't miss the UIL Baseball State Championship starting Wednesday, June 8th at UFCU Dishfalk Field in Austin and Dell Diamond in Round Rock. Ticket information and more can be found at UILTexas.org. Mason Dossett leads it off, top of the fourth for Ridgepoint. Panthers leading 3-2. to two. They're leading 1-0 in the series and trying to win tonight and finish off a sweep. Dossett has walked and struck out. Swings and misses at the first pitch from De Batista, who's really clamped down since he came in. Looks over the top of his glove. The 0-1 to Dossett, outside. Here's the 3-2. Breaking ball and goes all the way to the screen. By the way, we have a warning track here at Tompkins. It's a wonderful thing to have because Mason Dossett in the first game of the playoffs ran into the wall at Seven Lakes and uh, he didn't even slow down. Swing and a miss by Dossett and we are very, very thankful that Mason is okay and playing again. It could have been a lot worse. I mean, he was just face and torso straight into the wall and he caught the ball. It was amazing. Here's the 2-2. Swings and misses. One away, and De Batista starting to feel it, but now Parker Martin wants to take away that feeling. Here's another thing, and I remember this from 2018 when Travis played Cy Woods at Bridgelands Field. You know, Bridgelands Field is along the Grand Parkway. It's kind of 
It's got homes, but not right by it. You know what I mean? All right, Parker Martin ready. De Batista brings it. Swings at the curveball and fouls it back. So it was so dry during the spring of 2018 that water moccasins were thinking, you know, I need a drink. And they were going wherever they had to go, leaving those low spots, thinking they might find water somewhere else. So as Parker Martin steps out, thank you, that's perfect. That's just what I needed. So um, this water moccasin crawls onto the field, and the outfielder for Cy Woods calls time and says, you got to do something about this. All right. Parker Martin back in the box. Here's the 0-1. Swings and misses, he's down 0-2. So a coach went out there with a rake and a shovel and beheaded the water moccasin so that they could resume the game. But there's just a little bit more to the story. Parker Martin ready for the 0-2. Pitch on the way, curveball, slow roller up the middle. It's the shortstop, Markle throws and gets Parker Martin. 6-3 it goes and there, two away. So they had a big old shovel and they had the beheaded water moccasin and as the coach from Cy Woods was walking toward the left field wall, the crowd was screaming, crescendoing louder and louder as he moved toward the fence and when he threw it over, everybody screamed as if there was a home run that both fan bases were celebrating and it was wonderful. Justin Vasas up and swings at the first pitch just to get a piece of it. And it's nothing in one. Vasas is 0 for 2. De Batista rocks and fires the 0-1. And that is hit deep to left field, left center field gap. Long run, but the catch made by Laviolette. He sure covers a lot of ground out there. And it's a 1-2-3 inning for De Batista. We've played three and a half innings and Ridgepoint still leads it three to two over Tompkins in the game two of this series. We'll be right back on VibeFortBend.com. First Tire and Automotive serving Fort Bend County drivers for over 20 years salutes and congratulates the graduating class of 2022. Wherever the road takes you, you can be sure that you'll need professional auto care along the way. First Tire and Automotive's four locations throughout Fort Bend County are the perfect pit stops for all of your auto repair and maintenance needs. Check out the website firsttireandauto.com for great savings. The First Tire and Automotive technicians can fix all problems on any make or model. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. FirstTireAndAuto.com Archer Volkswagen showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Hunter Nichols back out there looking for a nice clean inning and he'll face the 7-8-9 hitters for Tompkins. It'll be Benavides, Brownlee, and Ivan Gomez. 3-2, Ridgepoint leads it. If the Panthers win tonight's game two, they sweep the series. But we've got a lot of baseball to play. Benavides single his first time, but swings and misses at an off-speed pitch to begin this at bat. Righty working to righty. Next pitch to Benavides. Breaking ball in there for a strike. Nothing in two. Bridgepoint fans have pumped, pumped, pumped up the volume. And I'm sure that the Panthers appreciate it. And now a timeout called by Coach Kyle Humphreys who wants to talk to Benavides. By the way, the end of that water moccasin story where the fans from both Cy Woods and Travis went nuts when the ball was thrown over the outfield fence, it was kind of like when that squirrel ran onto the field at Michigan back in the 90s. Pitch from Nichols down and away, and he can't get Benavides to chase. So the 
a September game and Michigan is crushing Slippery Rock State or something and the squirrel runs onto the field and the crescendo of the crowd as he crossed the goal line was amazing. The one, two, swung on and missed. Down goes Benavides. One out. Just the second strikeout for Hunter Nichols and now it is Tyler Brownlee who was the first strikeout victim. Pitch from Nichols, curveball upstairs, ball one to Brownlee. By the way, for those of you who are wondering what is a water moccasin, it's the same thing as a cotton mouth. It's a very aggressive venomous snake common in Texas. When you've had dry weather, just watch out. They can be anywhere. Here's the 1-0. Just above the letters, or maybe inside, and it's ball two on Brownlee. Nichols looks over the top of his glove and brings the 2-0. There's a strike inside half. Brownlee kind of backed up like he didn't think so. Coach Humphreys steps up there and says a little something to Brownlee. Here comes the 2-1. Swing and a miss. Nichols pumping in the fastball. Ready for the 2-2. Down and away and another 3-2 count. Nichols went to a 3-2 count three times in the first two innings. He stayed away from that, but you don't want to walk the number eight hitter. The payoff pitch. Swing and a miss. Two strikeouts for Hunter Nichols. Two away. Now Ivan Gomez. And the number nine hitter had a base hit when he came up to lead off the third. And in that inning, Topkins scored two times. They trail three to two. Nichols rocks and fires. Curveball in there. Nichols looking very calm and ready for the 0-1 upstairs with a breaking ball. If this goes to a game three, we'll have it for you tomorrow night from Seven Lakes. And there's off the end of the bat, picked up by Vlasic, and he fumbles it, and he can't get it to Nichols. That's an error on Vlasic. He taps himself on the sternum. And he was just very anxious to pick it up, but it was kind of like that, uh, you know, you can't pick something up if you're not still looking at it. And he was trying to gauge when Nichols was going to get to the bag and so forth. So it won't be a clean inning, although it can still be a clean inning as far as whether Tompkins scores. Back to the top now, and Cash Russell popped up and walked. First pitch, just missed the outside corner. Russell ready, right-handed hitter, but now a quick throw over and back to the bag is Gomez. Gomez one for two stealing in the postseason. Here's a 1-0, swing and a miss. Breaking ball fooled Cash Russell. Vlasic has a foot on first base to keep Gomez close to the bag. Here comes the 1-1, and it's a ground ball toward third. Parker Martin's gonna go to second. Stevens is waiting, the force out is made there. And so no runs on no hits, one error, and one man left on base. Ridgepoint still with the lead, 3-2, to two, as we go to the fifth inning on VipeFortBend.com.
Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavenaugh with Neville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. Hello, I'm Gary Horn with Horn Solutions. We agree with energy analysts that the energy market has stabilized. We anticipate significant merger and acquisition activity. Good resources are scarce. Horn Solutions is positioned to assist you in accounting, finance, IT, and supply chain. Our staff can assist you with outsourcing, or we can supply you with resources to join your staff. Visit hornsolutions.net for details. Gary Horn is a highly successful businessman who has made a huge impact in people's lives, and he loves what he does for a living. That's a big reason why Gary Horn and Horn Solutions support Get a Great Gig. Get a Great Gig is a free job search consultation service that will help you find a job you love, whether it's to make more money or get personal fulfillment in the career of your choice. Email them at getagreatgig at gmail.com or on Twitter at getgreatgigs. Travis Vlasic leads off for Ridgepoint. Top of the fifth. The Panthers lead it 3-2, to two, trying to sweep the series from Tompkins. It's the third round, the Region 3-6A Regional Quarterfinals. De Batista has been magnificent since coming out of the bullpen, and he starts with a strike in there. Strike one to Travis Vlasic. Vlasic drove home the first Ridgepoint run with a sacrifice fly. He singled to lead off the third and came around to, to score. Here's the 0-1, and he fouls a curveball back into the screen. The crowd has gotten a little bit quiet here these last few minutes, but they're just recharging the batteries. You know they're going to get loud again. Here's the pitch from De Batista way outside. Vlasic lays off. And the scoreboard says one and two, but I think it's two and one. No, it is one and two. Okay. And now Vlasic steps out before De Batista brings the next one. Kennett waits on deck, and after that, it's Carter Groen. Here's the pitch. And a nice rip, but he fouls it straight back into the screen. One run has been charged to De Batista, but other than that, he's been very strong. But he misses there with a curveball. It's two and two, a good eye by Vlasic. Scored the tying run in the bottom of the seventh last night. Here's the 2-2. Swings and misses at the curveball. Bridgepoint needs some insurance runs, but De Batista has been very stingy. Now it's Kennett. For De Batista, that is strikeout number five. J.J. Kid Dynamite Kennett swings at the first pitch. It's high to center field. Laviolette started in, but now he backs up. He's got it. Quickly two outs. Seven straight retired by De Batista. Two outs and the bases are clean for Carter Groen. Flight out to right field and singled in inning number three. Steps into the right-handed batter's box. Always goes through that same routine, tightening the Velcro around the wrists of the batting gloves. 
Crowds the plate from the right side, and De Batista is ready to bring it. Here it comes. And that's a high pop-up on the infield. Should be easy. De Batista has it in foul ground. Eight straight retired and a 1-2-3 inning again for De Batista. Ridge Point still ahead, but we'll go to the bottom of the fifth, clinging to that 3-2 lead on BiteFortBend.com. Coming in at five foot three inches, it's number one mom. She switched to Xfinity and got the all new three for one bundle. Unlimited internet, streaming, and Xfinity mobile. All for what you could pay wireless companies for just one 5G unlimited line. Boom shakalaka. That's why they call her the master of moolah, the sultan of savings, the queen of cash. And now, also with Xfinity Internet, you can get unlimited data, Wi-Fi equipment, and a free Flex 4K streaming box included with a two-year rate guarantee and no term contract. All for just $30 per month when you add an Xfinity mobile plan at regular rates. Go to Xfinity.com slash 3 for 1, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store today. Limited time offer, restrictions apply. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. New fast internet 300 megabits for second customers only. Xfinity Mobile requires post pay Xfinity internet. After 24 months, regular rates apply to all services and devices. All right, Ridge Point needs very tidy pitching and defense right here. In the bottom of the fifth, they're ahead three to two. Jace Laviolette, Jack Little, and Drew Markle. The numbers on Hunter Nichols so far. He's thrown 77 pitches, 52% of them for strikes. Three hits allowed and the two runs. Only one of those was earned. He struck out four and walked four in his four innings. Working to the lefty slugger, LaViolette. Pitch on the way, curveball upstairs. And it's one and nothing on LaViolette, who's 0 for 1, but he walked in the first inning. Open stance from the left-handed box. Here's the 1-0. Down and in. Here's the pitch, swung on and missed. Nice fastball from Hunter Nichols. Changing speeds very effectively. Here's the 2-1. Just missed the inside corner and he falls behind three and one. On Lava Yalette, you don't want to give him a cookie here. Nichols rocks and fires. Swung on and missed. Big uppercut swing by LaViolette. And another 3-2 count. Wind blowing out toward left harder, but LaViolette is a left-handed hitter. The payoff pitch, and he fouls it straight back. Almost got over the screen. Want to thank the campus athletic coordinator and head football coach Todd McVeigh here at Tompkins. He and his staff, very welcoming, a great facility. Here's the 3-2 upstairs, and LaViolette walks for the second time tonight. He represents the tying run, and now it's Jack Little. He's one for two, including a third-inning single. Little drove in a run with that base hit. First pitch, bunt squared, and he didn't get any piece of it, but it's a called strike. Actually, I'm not certain if it was a called strike or if it was a strike because Little offered at it. I don't know. 
But it's nothing and one. Throw over, LaViolette back without sliding. Nichols pitch count is in the 80s now. Here's the 0-1, squaring to bunt. Just missed the outside corner, I think. And it's one and one. Little crowds the plate from the right-handed box. Here it comes. This time he swings and comes up empty. One and two. So that those two bunt attempts might have been just for show. Or I should say two times where he squared around to bunt. And it's one and two and now Little stepping a long way from the batter's box. I don't know if he wants to talk to coach Kyle Humphreys or not. He's not just off the, the home plate dirt. He's off that ring of artificial turf around it. Now he's wiggling his left hand a little bit. I'm not sure what is at issue here. But I don't think pouring some sugar on it would help. Okay, he's back in the batter's box. I'm, I'm still unsure what it was that caused the delay, but the count is one and two. Nobody out and a runner at first. That's LaViolette. Three to two ridge point, but now a quick throw over in LaViolette. You know, he's so tall, he just steps back to the bag. Nichols steps off. Little stepped out. Now I think they're both ready. Here's the one, two. Curve ball just missed upstairs. And it could not have missed by much. Two and two. Nichols brings it. Swing and a foul back. Still two and two. Ample foul territory at Tompkins. That's usually good for the defense unless a pitch gets past the catcher. Here's the 2-2. Called strike three and down goes Little. That's a big one. One away. Fifth strikeout for Nichols. Now Drew Markle, he's 0 for 2, including a strikeout in the first. Righty versus righty. Nichols trying to keep LaViolette from advancing past first base. Curve ball in there for a strike. Squirts out of Kennett's mitt, but only dribbles away about four feet. No harm done. Let's keep Texas beautiful. Take good care of our beautiful state. Nothing and one the count. Markle digs in. Crowds the plate from the right-handed box. Pitch on the way. Strike on the outside corner. Markle said a little something after that strike call. I'm not sure what it was. But it wasn't a daily affirmation with Stuart Smalley, if you know what I mean. Here's the 0-2. Swung on and missed it. A pitch in the dirt. And first base is occupied, so Kennett doesn't have to tag the batter or throw down to first. There are two away. Sixth strikeout for Nichols. Now Landon West, he has walked twice. Body, body. Body, body. 
that Tompkins catcher has some really big forearms, so better pitch him carefully. First pitch to him, swings and misses at the curveball, and Nichols seems to be finding his groove. Here comes the 0-1, curveball in there, called strike. Big protect mode for West with an 0-2 count. Pitch on the way. Swing on and a miss. Hunter Nichols strikes out the side in the bottom of the fifth. We will go to the sixth. Ridgepoint up by a score of 3-2, trying to sweep this series. You're listening to the broadcast home of Fort Bend County Sports, VipeFortBend.com. Glad you're with us. We'll be right back. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. First Iron Automotive, serving Fort Bend County drivers for over 20 years, salutes and congratulates the graduating class of 2022. Wherever the road takes you, you can be sure that you'll need professional auto care along the way. First Iron Automotive's four locations throughout Fort Bend County are the perfect pit stops for all of your auto repair and maintenance needs. Check out the website firsttireandauto.com for great savings. The First Iron Automotive technicians can fix all problems on any maker model. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. FirstTireAuto.com. Hello, fans. This is Bradley Stavanaugh with Neville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local, hometown, trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. Ridge Point in the top of the sixth, leading by a score of 3-2, to two, looking to tack on a run or two or more to make this more comfortable. Tompkins nipping at their heels and the Falcons in a must-win situation. It'll be Owen Ferris, Quinn Pfeiffer, and Zion Stevens do. Ferris is one for two with a single in the third. De Batista has really held down the fort for Tompkins. And the right-hander is not ready to bring the first pitch to Ferris. He stepped off. And Di Batista steps off the back of the mound again. We can tell you he's thrown three and two-thirds innings, four hits allowed, just one run, which was earned. He struck out five and has not walked anyone. Okay, now he's ready to pitch. Ferris is ready to swing, or is he? We're still waiting. Now, here comes the pitch. Down in the dirt with a curveball. The count is now two and nothing on Ferris. De Batista taking more time between pitches now. That pitch is down and away, and it's three and nothing. So he really has been in a groove, having retired eight straight. But there's ball four, and the streak ends. Ferris is on with a walk. All right, so what the Ridgepoint fans do is when you are the opposing pitcher and you throw a four-pitch walk, they start chanting ball five. Ball five, ball five, ball five, ball five, ball five 
And as you can probably hear somewhere on the other side of the ballpark, the Tompkins fans are chanting something. Meanwhile, Quinn Pfeiffer digs in. He's walked and struck out. Breaking ball, bunt attempt, and it goes foul and trickles behind home plate. Somebody needs to come get the baseball. And that somebody is Mason Dossett. Nothing and one, the count on Pfeiffer. Looks at Coach Welch. What could be a very important run is Owen Ferris leading off of first base. Pfeiffer already squares to bunt, but first a throw over and Ferris gets back. He's got very quick feet. Little is going to stay with one foot on the bag. Got a little bit quiet here, but there's a lot of tension in the air. Ridgepoint trying to finish off this series, but they're only up by a score of 3-2. to two. And there's no time like the present. If you're up one game to none, go ahead and finish the series. It's a bunt, and again it goes foul and trickles behind home plate. So now it's nothing and two on Pfeiffer. Wind still blowing out to left field and pretty strong. A little bit crossways from the right field foul pole to the left. Pfeiffer squaring to bunt again with the 0-2 count. Takes, it's upstairs for a ball. So rarely does a head coach or a manager say go ahead and bunt with two strikes that when they square around to bunt, you're almost thinking, was, was that a mistake? Did he realize, did he not realize there were two strikes? Before the one-two pitch, another throw over and Ferris dives back in. Pfeiffer's jersey sleeve flapping in the breeze. Here comes the one-two upstairs. It's two and two. Tompkins just trying to stay within hailing distance. They've done a great job coming back in this game. They're down 3-2. There's another throw over. De Batista pitching to keep his team alive. Five for ready in the right-handed batter's box. Here's the pitch. There goes the runner, and that hits off the knob of the bat. It's a foul ball. Pfeiffer kind of leaned back and the ball hit the knob of the bat. And so Ferris has to go back to first. That doesn't happen too often. I was afraid, ouch, that hit him, but he didn't even flinch. So the count is still two and two. Zion Stevens waits on deck. Ready for the 2-2. Di Batista comes set. Now comes home with it. Way upstairs. It's 3-2. and two. Nobody out in the top of the sixth. Ridge Point leading 3-2. to two. They have their leadoff man on. That's Ferris. He walked. And we're anticipating a payoff pitch to Quinn Pfeiffer. De Batista has his sign. Brings the 3-2. Ball four. Two men on. De Batista's control has been terrific, but not in this sixth inning. Two walks. And now Zion Stevens. If you read some old stories about the Brooklyn Dodgers of the 1950s, and they won that World Series in 1955 over the Yankees. 
And there was uh, a book somebody wrote called Praying for Gil Hodges. He was so badly in need of a hit. And uh, Zion Stevens really wants a hit. So how about a little divine intervention? Now time is called and Stevens, Pfeiffer, and Ferris have all been called over to Coach Welch to have a little meeting. And on the mound, there's a meeting among the Tompkins folks, but it doesn't include their head coach, Kyle Humphreys. Short talk. Now everybody's going back to their spots. And you wonder, are they talking about a double steal, something like that? Are they talking about a possible squeeze bunt just in case the situation allows for it. It's also an infield fly rule situation. Runners at first and second, and nobody out. Stevens squares to bunt. Crashing in is Little, the pitch is high, ball one. Little came within 25 feet of home plate. He was really crashing in hard. Benavides did not come crashing in, however. He squares to bunt again. Little is in close. And now Little has to go back because Stevens asked for time. The third baseman, Benavides, is coming in a little bit, but not too, too much. Want to know the count? Stevens pulls the bat back, watches the pitch go upstairs. It's two and nothing. I know Stevens wants to feel that sweet sensation of just crushing the ball, but he squares again. Here's the 2-0, pulls it back, and the pitch is high. It's three and nothing. And there's an appeal to the first base umpire. He's not even looking at the home plate umpire. Now he goes, palms down. Well, of course there wasn't a swing. It, it really wasn't even close. Three and oh. Stevens pointing the bat at the pitcher, Di Batista. In comes Little, pulls the bat back. It's a called strike. Three and one, and Stevens looks over at Coach Welch. So two, do the base runners. Ferris and Pfeiffer. Three one pitch. Here it comes. Outside ball four, the bases are loaded. And back to the top, and Mason Dossett. Reached on a walk to start the game. Came around and scored on a sacrifice fly by Travis Vlasic. Since then, he's struck out a couple of times, and both times it's been Di Batista. Big opportunity. Ridge point as the base is loaded with nobody out in the top of the sixth. They've got to get a crooked number out of this. They lead it three to two. Dossett digs in. No place to put him. Di Batista is going to go from the stretch. Here's the pitch. First pitch swinging. And he came up empty. Nothing in one. Ridge Point facing its second KDISD opponent in the playoffs. They beat Seven Lakes. They had to go three games to do it in the first round. Here's the 0-1. Curve ball upstairs. Dossett takes. It's one and one. Dossett did have a home run in district play. It was at Ridge Point. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Missing away is Di Batista. 
It's two and one. Parker Martin is in the on-deck circle. Gossett rocking back and forth, anticipating the pitch. Di Batista brings it outside. It's ball three. Di Batista is one pitch outside the strike zone away from four consecutive walks and an insurance run for Ridge Point. Here comes the 3-1 in there for a strike. When a guy is having a hard time hitting the strike zone, you make him throw one. Sometimes, in this case, you make him throw two. Ready for the payoff pitch. Here it comes. Swung on and missed. Dossett goes down. And another strikeout for Di Batista, who is really battling. And now Parker Martin. He's one for three at a second inning single, and it's time for him to bust out. Drove home one of the three Ridge Point runs. And here comes Kyle Humphreys out of the dugout for Tompkins. I'm not sure if they're going to make a pitching change here. We'll watch with wrapped attention. Do you listen with rapt attention? R-A-P-T. Can you watch with rapt attention? Well, we listen to uh, Twisted Sister. plate umpire is going out there to break up the conversation it appears there's not going to be a pitching change all right Parker Martin an extra base hit right here could be huge so far it's been nothing but singles for Ridge Point they have four hits in the game and they chant P Mart All right, I think we're ready for another pitch. Ridge Point fans are ready for at least one more run. Lefty hitting Martin facing Di Batista. For the third time now, here's the pitch. And it's a ground ball toward third base, grabbed by Benavides, comes home, and safe at home! West, the catcher, did not have his foot on the plate, and the run scores. Ferris crosses the plate to make it 4-2, to two, Ridge Point. And I don't know who to give the error to. It really wasn't that bad of a throw, but West, I don't know that he was expecting the throw because it was a high chopper. But in any case, it gets a run home. Ferris scores. Pfeiffer moves to third. Stevens moves to second. And safe at first is Parker Martin. Now it's Vossus with one out in the bases still loaded. Outside with the first pitch. De Batista battling hard. But he's gotten himself into real pickle here. Interestingly enough, Vlasic is waiting on deck. Pitch to Vasis. Outside, ball two. Ridge Point could throw a real haymaker here if they get that timely hit. Waiting on the 2 0. Here it comes. It's ground ball past third. It's going to be extra bases. Pfeiffer scores, Steven scores, Vlasic slides into third, it's a double for Vasas, and the Ridge Point Panthers 
get a 6-2 lead on a two-run double by Vasas. And the crowd are going wild. Old JV really comes through, you know? Well, there you go. There's your extra base hit. And two runs come in, and now it is Vlasic. De Batista is still out there. Six to two is the score. Ridgepoint looking for more. Runners at second and third. Vlasic started to go after the first one, but left it alone. Strike one at the belt. He's one for three. Single to lead off the third. Heavy tape on the right wrist, Vlasic ready. Big rip, comes up empty, it's nothing in two. That was just a hard ground ball between the third base bag and Adam Benavides. He dived after it, but to no avail. And Tompkins is in trouble now, trailing six to two. Nothing in two on Vlasic. De Batista brings it way outside. It's one and two. No chase by Travis. You know, you'd think with a first name like Travis, a family in Siena would, would just give their son a nickname so they didn't have to call him Travis. You know, rivalry and everything. One and two the count. De Batista brings it. Breaking ball off the end of the bat. Foul ball on the right side. Jack Little picks it up and returns the ball to De Batista, something you'd never see in the major leagues. You know, they throw that ball out and send it to a forensics lab or whatever it is they do. Wind still blowing out to left field. The one two to Vlasic, way outside, and it's two and two. The other pitchers who have come on for Tompkins in the playoffs thus far that haven't pitched tonight or pitched last night, you've got Judson Murdoch, you got Ty Dagley. But that's it, they haven't used very many. The 2-2. Vlasic swings at the curveball and it's out of play on the right. Hanging in there, looking for something he can drive all the way to Fulcher or wherever it is out there beyond the uh, left field fence. The crowd really wants a big hit from Vlasic. Here's the 2-2. And it's lined in the right field for a base hit. Here comes Parker Martin. Vasas is held at third. It's a run scoring single by Vlasic. It is seven to two. Ridgepoint got to be feeling good about things right now. He just shot it the other way. Good piece of hitting by Travis. Good job out there. Tyler Brownlee, the right fielder, got it in quickly. And now Coach Kyle Humphreys is going to the mound, and this time he is going to make a change. We'll step aside and tell you who the new man on the mound is when we return on VipeFortBend.com. Ridgepoint still batting in the top of the sixth. They've scored four times. Still only one out, and it is seven to two. We'll be back. Coming in at five foot three inches, it's number one mom. She switched to Xfinity and got the all new three for one bundle. Unlimited internet, streaming, and Xfinity mobile. All for what you could pay wireless companies for just one 5G unlimited line. Boom shakalaka. That's why they call her the master of moolah, the sultan of savings, the queen of cash. 
And now, also with Xfinity Internet, you can get unlimited data, Wi-Fi equipment, and a free Flex 4K streaming box included with a two-year rate guarantee and no term contract. All for just $30 per month when you add an Xfinity mobile plan at regular rates. Go to Xfinity.com slash three for one, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store today. Limited time offer, restrictions apply. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. New fast internet 300 megabits for second customers only. Xfinity Mobile requires post pay Xfinity internet. After 24 months, regular rates apply to all services and devices. First Siren Automotive, serving Fort Bend County drivers for over 20 years, salutes and congratulates the graduating class of 2022. Wherever the road takes you, you can be sure that you'll need professional auto care along the way. First Siren Automotive's four locations throughout Fort Bend County are the perfect pit stops for all of your auto repair and maintenance needs. Check out the website firsttireandauto.com for great savings. The First Siren Automotive technicians can fix all problems on any maker model. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. FirstTyronAuto.com. The new pitcher is left-hander Ty Dagley. Comes out of left field to take over on the mound for Di Batista. He becomes the third pitcher of the night for the Tompkins Falcons. Ty Dagley made a relief appearance in game three against Lamar. A game that Tompkins won to get into this third round. Dagley, based on that one appearance, has uh, no wins or losses record in the postseason. His ERA, 0.33. He's thrown two and one-thirds innings. He threw 41 pitches in that game three appearance. 61% strikes. Three hits allowed. One run. It was earned. He struck out four and walked one. And West, the catcher, being a leader, going out there putting his right arm around the shoulders of Dagley. Now let's see who is in left field. It is Cooper Markle, the brother of the shortstop Drew Markle. So you got West behind the plate, still little at first. Cash Russell at second, Drew Markle at short. Adam Benavides at third base. The new left fielder is Cooper Markle, Jace Laviolette in center field, and Tyler Brownlee in right field. And now it is J.J. Kennett. Hit a big double last night. That has put Ridge Point in a very good position right now. They lead seven to two, just one out. That pitch is in the dirt and West is able to keep it from going to the backstop and Vasas was ready to dash home had it gotten under him. Vlasic is at first base. He just singled in the seventh run. Ridge Point looking pretty good right here with a four-run inning. We're in the sixth. It's seven to two. Breaking ball caught the outside corner. Not my style, said JJ. Looks down there at Coach Welch. Oh, they want something big to happen right here. Vlasic delivered. Can J.J. get a base hit? And before we see the next pitch, we see Dagley step off the mound. Lefty goes from the stretch. wonder if Vlasic might try to steal second and draw a throw. Here's the 1-1. Swung on and missed. That was a nasty curve. 1-2 and two on J.J. Kennett. Dagley taking his time as he looks in and gets the sign. Kennett ready. Swings and misses, but uh, I think he got a piece of it. He did. So he's still alive. Got a silly millimeter of the ball. So it's still one and two. If Ridgepoint wins tonight, we don't have a broadcast for you tomorrow night. I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. Actually, I do. I have chores. I have paperwork. It's crazy. Here's the one-two. High in the air. Pop up on the infield. It's Little from first base. 
And he was no further than 45 feet away from home plate when he grabbed that one. So you could really say that uh, Dagley kind of sawed off J.J. Kennett. However, Carter Groen, whose uh, mustache, I must say, is really coming in. You know, a lot of members of the Panthers have been growing mustaches since game one of that Seven Lakes series. Mr. Walkoff with two walk-off wins in the playoffs thus far. It was game one against Westside and game one against Tompkins. And now stepping out in front of the plate is the catcher West making those hand signals. Vasas is at third base. Vlasic is at first. Two outs in the top of the sixth. Ridgepoint has put up four, and they lead seven to two. Here's the pitch by Dagley. It's high in the air. It is deep to left field. It has got a chance. It is going back. It is off the wall. Vasas has scored. Vlasic scores. Two-run double by Carter Groen. And Ridgepoint blowing it open. It is 9-2. Oh, he missed a homer by, I don't know, I don't know, maybe three or four feet. It was a mammoth blast. I thought the wind would carry it out, but a two-run double is not bad. And you know something? I want to say... How about that classy Drew Markle? The shortstop for Tompkins goes over to Carter Groen and shakes his hand. And I don't know if he was shaking his hand to say great hit or if you guys win this thing, go win state. But uh, I think that's a good kid out there, Drew Markle. All right, now Owen Ferris to bat. And the Panthers have batted around in this sixth inning. First pitch taken. Outside corner strike to Ferris, who started all this off with the walk, and he came home to score. Six runs have come in. Groen and Vossis both with doubles in the inning. Pitch on the way, and Ferris fouls it back behind us. Everybody craning their necks to watch it go. Oh, that was a deep drive, and it almost got out. That would have been fun. But I like it when it hits the wall, too. Carter Wallbanger. Nothing and two on Ferris. Pitch on the way. Outside for a ball. Ty Dagley, the third pitcher of the night for the Tompkins Falcons. There is dust blowing across the infield. Ferris pays it no mind. He's ready for the one, two. Here it comes. Check swing. Did he go around? Uh, evidently, it's uh, called strike three anyway. Or the home plate umpire said he was out. But no worries for Ridgepoint. They're doing just fine. So we will go to the bottom of the six. They lead it by nine to two over Tompkins. And we'll see if Hunter Nichols goes back to the hill. We'll be back on VipeFortBend.com. Coming in at five foot three inches, it's number one mom. She switched to Xfinity and got the all new three for one bundle. Unlimited internet, streaming, and Xfinity mobile. All for what you could pay wireless companies for just one 5G unlimited line. Boom shakalaka. That's why they call her the master of moolah, the sultan of savings, the queen of cash. 
And now, also with Xfinity Internet, you can get unlimited data, Wi-Fi equipment, and a free Flex 4K streaming box included with a two-year rate guarantee and no term contract. All for just $30 per month when you add an Xfinity mobile plan at regular rates. Go to Xfinity.com slash three for one, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store today. Limited time offer, restrictions apply. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. New fast internet 300 megabits per second customers only. Xfinity Mobile requires post pay Xfinity internet. After 24 months, regular rates apply to all services and devices. It is still Hunter Nichols' game. In five innings, he's thrown 96 pitches, three hits allowed, two runs. One of them was earned. He struck out seven and walked five. So the book is closed on Di Batista. Four innings pitched. He threw 78 pitches, gave up six hits in the four innings. Seven runs allowed, four of them earned, six strikeouts, and three walks. All right, Hunter Nichols ready to work to Dagley, who started the game in left field. Now he's the pitcher of record. First pitch catches the inside corner, strike one. Ridgepoint fans loving the way their team has played tonight. And they're already thinking about celebrating, but the Panthers got to concentrate on two more innings. Swing and a miss at the heater from Hunter Nichols. The 0-2 pitch on the way. And that is to left field. Groen charging, makes the catch. Got a great break on it. A sinking liner, but no way he was going to let it hit the grass. Adam Benavides now, the third baseman, has singled and struck out. Wow, six runs in the sixth. Nice rally by Ridgepoint. First pitch upstairs to Benavides. Just in case there's a rain chance tomorrow, if Ridgepoint holds on to this lead, it won't matter if it rains. Swing and a miss on the 1-0. High heat from Hunter. Wow, that was alliterative, wasn't it? <laughs> Nichols brings it. Fisted foul off the screen just above the ridge point dugout on the first base side. New baseball for Nichols. Now he wants yet another baseball. Maybe that will be to his liking. One out and the base is empty as Ridgepoint is trying to nail down a win. They lead it nine to two in the bottom of the sixth. Benavides with a low, slow practice swings. Takes a one-two pitch and it's high for ball two. Now he rocks and fires. Call strike three. Down goes Benavides, two away. Here goes the old left right. Eight strikeouts for Nichols, and he's reaching the 100 pitch plateau. In fact, he's exceeded it. He's at 102. Now it is Tyler Brownlee. <clears throat> Nichols brings it. Called strike on the outside corner. He's really got a rhythm going now. Here's the 0-1, just below the knees. Here's the 1-1, one, one. upstairs, 2-1. and one. Tyler Brownlee just trying to get on somehow. Here's the 2-1, one. 
That's a fly ball to center. Dossett ranging over, running to his left. Camps under it, and he's got it. One, two, three inning for Hunter Nichols. And the Ridgepoint fans really starting to feel it. We will go to the seventh. Panthers nine. And the Tompkins Falcons two. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavanaugh with Needville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. All right, it's still Dagley out there on the mound for the Tompkins Falcons. And this is a great situation for the Ridgepoint hitters who have been maybe uh, pressing a little bit, trying to get a hit. So you start off with Quinn Pfeiffer. He did walk and score in the previous inning, but, you know, he would really like to uh, square up the ball, and Stevens will be on deck to start the inning. He'd like to do the same. Left-hander Dagley working to Quinn Pfeiffer. Rocks and fires way outside. Two walks and a strikeout for the mighty Quinn. Here's the 1-0, swung on and missed, it's one and one. Dagley gets the sign. Roxanne comes home with it. Way upstairs, two and one. So Ridgepoint gets either Pearland or Clear Creek. Pearland uh, must have finished off the sweep tonight. Thank you for the assist. Deb Mize, assistant athletic director, swung on and missed by Pfeiffer. It's two and two. Do we know where it's going to be? They haven't decided yet. But we'll be there. Dang it. Pearland's a tough program, but so is Ridgepoint. Here's the 2-2. High in the air to right field. It's going to hang up. Brownlee coming in, waving everybody else off, fighting the wind a little bit. He makes the catch, and that's a tough thing to do when the wind is at your back and blowing pretty hard as a ball is coming to you that was hit high in the air. One away for Zion Stevens, and... I really want to see him crush one. This uh, is his first look at Dagley. Lefty working to righty. Here's the first pitch. Upstairs, up, up around his eyes. Well, that sixth, six runs, uh, top of the sixth, I can't speak. That, uh, that six run top of the sixth by Ridgepoint kind of drained all the tension out of this game. Swing and a miss at the 1-0. Here we go, Sam! And Coach Welch with a little gesture just saying, don't uppercut the ball, just get down into the hitting zone and come right through it. Here's the 1-1. Strike on the inside corner. Zion is really fighting it up there. Yeah. 
Dagley ready to bring the one two. Here it comes. Swung on and missed and down goes Stevens. Still fighting it. Hang in there Zion. I guess the expression is hang with them. But you know when you're a player you don't want your teammates to be telling you hang with them. All right, Mason Dossett. Reached on a walk in the first and scored the Panthers' first run. They had single runs in the first, second, and third innings as he takes a pitch up high for a ball. And Ridgepoint didn't score in the fourth or the fifth, but then six runs in the top of the sixth, and they lead it 9-2. to two. Here's a 1-0 outside 2 and nothing on Dossett. If he gets on, it'll be Parker Martin. Dagley rocks and delivers. Dossett takes and it's high for a ball. He started to pull the trigger and held up. Three and oh the count. Dagley taking his time before he starts his motion. Here it comes. Strike one. Dossett had no intention whatsoever of swinging. It's three and one. Here comes the three one. Swung on and missed and the count goes full. Dossett ready for the next delivery from Dagley. It's the payoff pitch. Call strike three. And so ends the top of the seventh. But Ridge Point has a seven-run lead to protect. And we're going to have a new pitcher. It is the freshman left-hander, Jack McKernan. Go into the hill and we'll give you his numbers when we return on BikeFortBend.com. Coming in at five foot three inches, it's number one mom. She switched to Xfinity and got the all new three for one bundle. Unlimited internet, streaming, and Xfinity mobile. All for what you could pay wireless companies for just one 5G unlimited line. Boom shakalaka. That's why they call her the master of moolah, the sultan of savings, the queen of cash. And now, also with Xfinity Internet, you can get unlimited data, Wi-Fi equipment, and a free Flex 4K streaming box included with a two-year rate guarantee and no term contract. All for just $30 per month when you add an Xfinity mobile plan at regular rates. Go to Xfinity.com slash 3 for 1, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store today. Limited time offer, restrictions apply. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. New fast internet 300 megabits for second customers only. Xfinity Mobile requires post pay Xfinity internet. After 24 months, regular rates apply to all services and devices. All right. You want to know about Jack McKernan? You want answers? You want the truth? I don't know if you can handle the truth. I kind of accidentally wandered into that, but think about it, uh, you know. Jack Nicholson, Jack McKernan. Well, Jack made a relief appearance with no decision in game two against Westside where the Panthers finished off the sweep. And his first pitch is outside for ball one. And he's working to Ivan Gomez, lefty working to righty. Outside corner missed, it's two and nothing. McKernan got a start and a complete game win, a three hit shutout in game three against Seven Lakes, so Ridge Point survived. Here's the 2-0. Here's a strike at the knees. So Jack's win-loss record in the postseason is 1-0, and he has an ERA of exactly zero. 2-1 as he works to Gomez. That's on the inside corner for a strike. McKernan, eight innings pitched in the postseason, three hits allowed, no runs of any kind, eight strikeouts and three walks. Here's the 2-2, fouled away, just, just tapped over to the on-deck circle on the left side. Hey, hey. 
All right, here comes another 2-2. And it's tapped foul on the left side. Cash Russell is waiting to bat next. Ridgepoint fans are anticipating victory and very proud of their team. Here's the 2-2. And that is in foul ground on the right side past first base and no one could get to it. It did stay within the confines of the ballpark. Jack McKernan can't drive, but boy, can he pitch. He can't drive legally. He might actually be pretty good at it. Started to bring the pitch, stepped off. Gomez stepped out. And what's going on? We got the first base umpire stepping up saying something, but it can't be about a balk because Actually, he says uh, the count is three and two. I'm not sure what they're talking about here. Coach Welch is coming out of the Ridgepoint dugout. He's talking to the home plate umpire. There are no base runners, so a walk, you know, is, I'm sorry, a balk is just, uh, it's not even in play. A balk is any intentional move by a pitcher to deceive a base runner. So if there are no base runners, there can be no balk. I don't know what that was about, but it's three and two. And Gomez still in the box. McKernan brings it down and away, ball four. Now back to the top of the Tompkins order and Cash Russell. Wind blowing harder, dust kicking up, first pitch outside. Very comfortable situation for McKernan. Pitch on the way, in there for a strike, one and one. There are all kinds of purple feathers flying around here. Here's the 1-1. Strike on the inside corner and a look of incredulity from Cash Russell. He didn't think it was in the strike zone, but it's 1-2. and two. McKernan brings it. That's a line drive to left field. Picked up on two hops by Groen. He gets it back in, and two men are on for the Tompkins Falcons. Single for Russell, and that pushes Gomez over to second base, and now Jace Laviolette. Lefty working to lefty now. McKernan looks in at his catcher, Kennett. And time is called, and J.J. is going to go out there and talk to him halfway between the mound and home plate. No defensive changes for Ridgepoint when they lifted Nichols and brought in McKernan. LaViolette, open stance from the left-handed box. He gets his first look at Kernan. Hard wind blowing. Curveball strike. Nothing in one. Gomez is at second. Russell is at first. It's nine to two Ridge Point, and we're in the bottom of the seventh. Last chance for the Tompkins Falcons. McKernan comes set at the belt. Doesn't look at the runners. Brings it. Curve ball. Sure looked good, but. Somehow it was a ball, one and one. McKernan looking like a Buckingham Palace guard as he looks in, brings the one one. Pop up and foul ground on the left side. Over is Parker Martin near the dugout and he overran it. Oh my goodness, he could have made the catch, but he was hustling so hard. 
that he kind of had to reach back and it was beyond his reach. So it's one and two. <laughs> That's harsh. I don't know if you heard it or not. I won't repeat it, but it was harsh. Here's the one, two, down and away. Kennett slides over and keeps it in front. There are runners at first and second. Ridgepoint with a comfortable lead, but haven't recorded any outs in the bottom of the seventh. McKernan on the mound. 2-2 two -two to Laviolette. Swung on and missed. He gets the big guy. Make it nine strikeouts in eight plus innings of postseason work for young Jack McKernan. All right, now it is Jack Little. He's been productive tonight with uh, one for three night. First pitch to him, down and in. McKernan looking in, wind blowing harder. Here's the pitch in the dirt. Kennett picks it up. Now Kennett steps out in front of the plate and tells Jack, hey, you know, don't mess around here. Let's throw strikes. Let's finish this. Jack wants a new baseball. Ridge Point will meet Pearland if they can finish this off. Jack Little with a 2-0 count. Facing the lefty. And it's a ground ball. Parker Martin dives at it, but it goes into left field, and they hold the runner Gomez at third. The bases are loaded with one out on a hard ground ball base hit by Jack Little. Two hits for him tonight. Gomez stops at third. Cash Russell is at second. And now it is Drew Markle. Kennett wants to go out and talk to McKernan before he pitches to Drew Markle. And you know, Drew Markle wears the stirrup socks. I just now noticed, but you know, the, uh, the open part of the stirrup is more than halfway up his shin. And he's got long, slender shins. All right, McKernan was ready to work, stepped off. Now he's back up there. Pitches from the windup, and the first pitch misses the outside corner. Rich Point fans not happy. Here's the 1 0. Missed the outside corner again. It's 2 and nothing. McKernan brings it, and it's popped back near the top of the screen in foul ground, and it's two and one. What are you on, Blue? <laughs> there are going to be some worn out vocal cords in the morning. McKernan steps up there, gets the new baseball after that foul ball. And it's two and one on Drew Markle. Here's the two one. Strike on the inside half. Markle kind of jackknifed his body as if the pitch was close to him, but it was in the zone. It's two and two. Here it comes. And it gets past Kennett and a run is gonna score. Gomez comes home, it is nine to three. And that's a wild pitch that gets Gomez home. Russell to third, Little to second. That takes the force off if you were thinking about a game ending double play. And the count is now full on Drew Markle. Can't be messing around here. McKernan brings it. And that's a line drive into center field for a base hit. It should bring home two runs. It sure does. And it is nine to five. And it's time for a mound visit. Drew Markle, a two run single. Go, 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 
And uh, McKernan looking over at the dugout, and yes, here comes Clinton Welch. He asks for time and gets it. So one thing that I wanted to mention, last Saturday night we broadcasted a game three at the neutral side of Manville as the Foster Falcons were taking on Laporte. And Laporte led the game seven to nothing going to the bottom of the seventh. And you know the Laporte fans were kind of thinking, we got this made, we got this, but there was an RBI double, and it was seven to one. And then Laporte loaded the bases full of Foster Falcons, and they got a grand slam, and it became seven to five. And then after that, Foster loaded the bases before finally the final out was recorded. All right, it is nine to five. And now it is Landon West, the catcher. And that hit him in the left arm. Runners first and second. It is nine to five, and the tying run is in the on-deck circle. All right, now it is Ty Dagley. The comforting thing here is that we're getting into the bottom half of the lineup, so the guys who can really hurt you We've gotten hits off McKernan. And now it is Dagley, who is 0 for 3 and getting his first look at McKernan. Lefty working to lefty. Runners at first and second with one out. The infield fly rule is in effect. Pitch on the way. And it's a bunt, and it goes into foul ground. Nothing in one. J.J. Kennett was all over that like a pit bull on a poodle. But it rolled into foul territory. Dagley 0 for 3 on the night. McKernan brings the 0-1 down and away. 1-1. One one. McKernan taking a moment. Getting, getting it comfortable for his left foot. Brings the 1-1. And it's a ground ball past Parker Martin. Everybody's going to be safe. Nobody's going to score on this particular play, but the bases are loaded. It is 9-5, and now you have the tying run coming to the plate. And I'm going to give a base hit to Ty Dagley. He hit that one hard. It was spinning away from Parker Martin. He almost caught it, got a glove on it, and slowed the momentum. Now it is Adam Benavides. He's one for three, but he struck out twice. Drama that we didn't expect about 10 minutes ago. Pitch to Benavides, hit him in the foot, and a run comes home. It is nine to six, and now the winning run will come to the plate. Drew Markle came home with a big smile on his face. Kennett's going to go out there and talk to McKernan. All right, here we go. First pitch in there for a strike. Tyler Brownlee in the batter's box. He's the number eight hitter. Pitch. Fly ball to right field. Owen Ferris has it. Makes the catch. Runner at third bluffs and does not go. Everybody stays where they are, and now there are two outs. Oh. All right, so the infield can be at normal depth. Ivan Gomez will step up there. Tompkins has batted around in this seventh inning and made things very interesting. It is nine to six. McKernan is tying his spike. 
And now we have a hidden ball trick, and the series is over. Travis Vlasic pulls off the hidden ball trick. And he tags out Benavides at first base. It's over. The hidden ball trick. The umpires want to talk about it first. They're going to talk about it first. Vlasic had the ball in his glove, and he tagged Benavides out. Kennett pointed at it. I looked over there, and an umpire is was making the out call, the one at first base. So they're going to talk about it. Four umpires gathered behind the mound, and they've told all the players from both teams to move away from it. This reminds me of a Tascacita back in 2019 when the Ridgepoint Panthers had Jack Baker, the shortstop, pull off a hidden ball trick. It wasn't to end the game, but it was a critical out. The umpires are talking about it. And hopefully soon they'll turn and make the call and you will know. Of course, you won't know which group of fans is cheering, so I better tell you what the call is. They're still talking. And now we're going to get a conversation between the first base umpire and Coach Clinton Welch. The first base umpire did make an out call. So I don't know what would be the, the dispute here. Well, I don't think this is going to be an out, and I think Ridgepoint is going to have to go back out into the field. The ball was never dead. And Ridgepoint is going to have to take the field. It's not over. It is nine to seven. There are two outs. Wow, I've never seen anything quite like this. All right, so it is Gomez in the batter's box, and uh, he was waiting for the first pitch, and Travis Vlasic had tagged out a runner at first base, but now there are runners at second and third. It's Benavides at second, Dagley at third, and the tying run is Benavides. And now I think we're going to have a change in the runner at second base, are we? Coming off the field is Benavides, and they'll send someone faster out there. And if he turns around, I'll tell you who it is. I believe it is Arian Chopra. Arian the Chupacabra Chopra. So the number nine hitter in this Falcons lineup, it's up to him, Ivan Gomez. Nine to seven. Five runs have come in for Tompkins and it's nervous Nelly time. Here's the pitch. Gomez takes a ball outside. Gomez steps out and now back in. Here comes the 1-0. Outside, two and nothing. Ridgepoint fans are furious with the uh, current strike zone. They really are. McKernan brings it upstairs. It is 3-0. and oh. And if he walks Gomez, then we go to the top of the order and cash Russell. All right. Here comes the 3-0 in there for a strike. Tompkins is down to its final out, but it sure doesn't feel that way at the moment. McKernan brings the 3-1. Ball four. The bases are loaded. McKernan cannot believe the call. All right. 
The young freshman is going to have to maintain his composure. Coach Welch has come out of the dugout. I think he wants to talk to his pitcher, maybe. I think he's asking if he has a mound visit that he can use without making a pitching change. And evidently he does. So he's going to go out there and talk to Jack. J.J. Kennett goes out there as well. He doesn't call the entire infield to the mound. The bases are loaded. The tying run is at second base. And now the conversation is over. Coach Welch has always had one of the best coached teams in the district, in the area, so he doesn't usually have to say a whole lot. But it is Cash Russell. It's been a night of frustration for the most part for Tompkins, but Russell has done pretty well. He walked in the third and scored, and he got a single earlier this inning. Wind up and the pitch in there for a strike to Chase, uh, Cash Russell. Here comes the 0-1, and he fouls it out of play, two strikes. All right, now Tompkins is down to its final strike. But McKernan's got to throw a good one to a quality hitter in Cash Russell. McKernan rocks and brings it. Fouled out of play again to the right. Kennett gives McKernan a new baseball. Tying run at second, winning run at first for Tompkins, nine to seven. McKernan wants a new ball. J.J. Kennett gets one from the umpire and we will resume. 0-2 on Cash Russell. Here's the pitch. And that is sliced foul out of play. It is hard to sneak one by Cash Russell. Wow, what a ball game. McKernan gets the sign he wants, takes two deep breaths, and now Russell wants to back out. Nothing into the count. Here comes the 0-2. And it's popped up, but it goes out of play on the right side. Unfortunately, that wind blowing from the right field foul pole to the left field foul pole didn't blow it back into play for Ridgepoint. Russell hanging in there. Ridgepoint still one strike away. Here's the pitch. Outside, it's one and two. McKernan looks over the top of his glove, gets the sign. Here's the pitch. Sliced foul out of play again. The tension ratcheting up with every single pitch. Ridgepoint trying to close off a sweep. It looked like it was going to be easy. It's been an eventful bottom of the seventh. Here's the pitch. Outside, two and two. McKernan's hat blows off. Oh, the yearning for just one more strike. Here comes the 2-2. And that's lined toward Ferris and right. He's got it. Rich Point wins. Oh, my goodness. What a Maylox moment it was. Jack McKernan 
does something a freshman does. He was waving bye-bye to Tompkins, and Coach Dutka and Coach Welch escort him to the dugout. Now the teams will line up and shake hands. So Ridgepoint thought they had the final out with a hidden ball trick. All right, so the players showing great sportsmanship. You see Hugs and Drew Markle. Wow, that's a classy kid for Tompkins. Those Falcons fought all the way down to the end and really, really, they really made us sweat right here at the end. So the Ridgepoint fans, uh, kind of like the Laporte fans were on Saturday night when they finally closed out a 7-5 to win over Foster. All right, we're going to take a break, and I'll be back with the totals on VibeFortBend.com. Ridgepoint is going to the fourth round, and they will face Pearland. We'll be back. Coming in at five foot three inches, it's number one mom. She switched to Xfinity and got the all new three for one bundle. Unlimited internet, streaming, and Xfinity mobile. All for what you could pay wireless companies for just one 5G unlimited line. Boom shakalaka. That's why they call her the master of moolah, the sultan of savings, the queen of cash. And now, also with Xfinity Internet, you can get unlimited data, Wi-Fi equipment, and a free Flex 4K streaming box included with a two-year rate guarantee and no term contract. All for just $30 per month when you add an Xfinity mobile plan at regular rates. Go to Xfinity.com slash 3 for 1, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store today. Limited time offer, restrictions apply. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. New fast internet, 300 megabits per second customers only. Xfinity Mobile requires post pay Xfinity internet. After 24 months, regular rates apply to all services and devices. Hello, I'm Gary Horn with Horn Solutions. We agree with energy analysts that the energy market has stabilized. We anticipate significant merger and acquisition activity. Good resources are scarce. Horn Solutions is positioned to assist you in accounting, finance, IT, and supply chain. Our staff can assist you with outsourcing, or we can supply you with resources to join your staff. Visit hornsolutions.net for details. Gary Horn is a highly successful businessman who has made a huge impact in people's lives, and he loves what he does for a living. That's a big reason why Gary Horn and Horn Solutions support Get a Great Gig. Get a Great Gig is a free job search consultation service that will help you find a job you love, whether it's to make more money or get personal fulfillment in the career of your choice. Email them at getagreatgig at gmail.com or on Twitter at getgreatgigs. First Siren Automotive, serving Fort Bend County drivers for over 20 years, salutes and congratulates the graduating class of 2022. Wherever the road takes you, you can be sure that you'll need professional auto care along the way. First Siren Automotive's four locations throughout Fort Bend County are the perfect pit stops for all of your auto repair and maintenance needs. Check out the website, firsttireandauto.com, for great savings. The First Siren Automotive technicians can fix all problems on any make or model. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. First Tire Archer Auto Volkswagen Com. showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. All right, Ridgepoint has broken up their team huddle after this game, and here are your totals. Ridgepoint with nine runs on seven hits. They made two errors, and they left seven runners on base. Tompkins, seven runs on seven hits, so they matched the Ridgepoint hit total. Tompkins made one error, and they left six runners on base. The winning pitcher is Hunter Nichols. He improves his postseason record to one and one this year. And losing pitcher is Solomon Rotberg. Hunter Nichols, seven innings, or actually, well, uh, I'm sorry, I'm just looking at some inaccurate information. Hunter Nichols pitched the first six innings. And then you had Jack McKernan came on and, and he gave up five runs. 
and it got to be nervous Nelly time. But here's what happened for Ridgepoint in the sixth inning that I'll say iced the game. But on the other hand, uh, you know, they needed every one of those runs that they scored. They scored single runs in the first, second, and third inning. So there was uh, three runs right there. And they didn't score again until the sixth when they scored six times. You had... A two-run double by Vosses, followed up by a double by Vlasic that drove home another run. So Ridgepoint was getting it done. And the relief pitcher, Michael DiBattista, had been pitching so well, but he walked the first three men in the sixth, and that kind of got things rolling for Ridgepoint. So it was 9-2, to two, and it looked like Ridgepoint was going to have a relaxed bottom of the seventh, but it got kind of hairy there. But in the end, Ridgepoint does get the victory, and that means they're moving on to the fourth round, and they will take on the Pearland Oilers. So hats off to the Tompkins Falcons for a great season, and the way they fought all the way to the end in this game is really amazing. And they may break up their huddle, and you might hear their fans give them an ovation for the great season that it was. So VibeFortBend.com will continue in 2021-2022. What a... An exciting game, well played at times by Ridgepoint, but uh, in the end, they they won a close one. So congratulations to the Panthers. They move on and face Pearland, and whenever and wherever those ball games are, we will have them for you on VipeFortBend.com. I'm Roger Smith, and for the entire team, Les Clary, Merle Bertrand, Suna Venkat, Rosie Bega, Bob McKay, Patrick Kinnick, all those who are behind VipeFortBend.com, we thank you for listening again. Our final score, Ridge Point 9 and Tompkins 7 series is over. On to face Pearland for the Panthers. Good night from Katie, and God bless you. Stay-